G Money. Yo. Oh, man. What's up? What's up, man? man. Oh, man. On? There's what's a up? lot going on out here. What's up? What's up, man? What you got? The MTV. What's up, man? You got the, come on, tell me you got MTV sponsors now. Don't don't play like that, because now you got to break bread with me, boy. Do that, I? I? Yeah, I'm out. I'm... Do I? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? Nah, I'm cool. I'm cool, man. We here. You know? They get at me, man. They get Busy. At, they I see get, the comments. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, get at me, but... That's a spirit, man. That's a flip yeah. I know. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They flip that. Everybody in the comments talking crazy. Yeah. That's a flip that I know. Yeah, too peaceful. <laughs> I've been too peaceful lately. But at, at the end of the day, you know, it's dope. I'm excited about the next interview you're about to do. Before we get into that, everything's good with you? Yeah, busy, busy, man. You know? I got the keys, though, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you... I want to know. Like, are you DJing? Again? Like, Yeah. Spots, you that's, why I, I'm, that's why I'm tired now, man. I, I, I had two yesterday. I, I, had, uh, I had one Saturday. And then... um. I, d- I played in some. Uh, I played ball this weekend. I played in a DJ, a, p- a promoter game in Brooklyn. H two O. No, that was I DJ for that one. But I played in. A, I actually played in the game Saturday in Brooklyn. How did you do? Uh, you know, my knee feels a little crazy right now. Your um, right knee, right? Yeah, yeah. I scored like ten points though. I'm getting a little. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> ten points. I like a little ten points. You know. Yeah, like. yeah. Do you? Do you? This used to be nice, like you missed it. Uh, you know, you went to Holy Cross, right? Holy Cross, you know. You had a big beef with Far Rockaway. Oh, yeah, I'll you tell you that know. story. I, I know that I was there. They wasn't there for that. I, if he was there, that's crazy, bro. That's that's. I was there. That I was there. there. Nah, nah, nah. I was there. But yeah, but, nah, it was good. Everything, you know. It feels good to be here, man. You know, this is we 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 we're doing an episode again. You know, we tried three times. Third third time the charm. Third time the charm. You know what I mean? I like his swag too when he walked in here. So yeah, yeah I'm, he's cool. I'm, I'm, he's smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might be a little biased there. I don't know, man. You guys, <laughs> nah, dude, I'm doing that. Come on, not for I him. might be a little biased, for my him. man. My, you know, I, I don't know, man. He walked in here ready. He got the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Michelle. Shout Mighty to Michelle. Time. One, yeah. Michelle, one time. Mighty two times. Oh my god. My boy Easy, my, my, my cousin Easy is here. Easy, what up, in man? The background. Um, shout out to Eba. Shout out to Bask. But let's get straight to it. Let's do it. G Money. Yo. Episode one six nine. We made it. We got a special guest. Yeah. DC in the building. Uh oh. Teflon Sean, they call him. Uh oh. <laughs> huh. Uh oh. Teflon Sean. Mm-hmm. Round of applause one more time. My man Sean Branch in a bit of round of applause. Yeah, welcome, yeah, welcome, yeah, welcome. yeah, 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 yeah. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. How you be here, man? Hey, good, man. Welcome. Apologies about last time. It's all good, man. No, you know, apologies. <laughs> you know what I mean? You had to go back on the highway. I told you, man. It's all love, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> welcome I'm to coming back. Script, Whenever man. you was ready, I'm coming back, man. You said that. You yeah, kept your word. Kept my word. I'm a man of my yeah. word, man. Yeah, all day. I, I like your shades, too, man. Ooh, look kind of expensive. I'm trying to tell you. You see the you see the belt? You see the shoes? Come on, man. Come on, man. If you go too far, bro. All right, I'm a chill, because somebody in the comments was a little... Nah, I'm upset, but they was like, yo, come on, you got the heat cool in the first six minutes? They was like, yeah, yeah that's I good. That, I saw that, <laughs> So I'm going I'm to I'm I'm take it easy today. I'm going to yeah, take it easy. Yeah. That's but, um, book money, man. <laughs> well, welcome, well, welcome, man. Um, We're happy to have you here. We've been hearing about you. This is one of the requested, the most requested interviews. Mm. Um, They've been putting your name a lot. Yeah. Got to interview Sean Brand. DC, you got to interview him. Got to interview him. And I'm just happy that you're here. And I'm happy that we're able to finally make it happen. Because we was thinking like, yo, this may not be meant to happen, bro. Right. The first time you canceled, then the second time we lost the keys and then your man looked at his skin watch and said, yo, we got to go. We're in the highway riding. Yeah. Like, That's my man. So Shout out. What's my man name, man? What's my man? Man, man. Man, man. man. Oh. That's man, man. man. That's Cuzzo right there, man. Cuzzo? Cuzzo yeah. right there? Yeah, both of them. Oh, what? Yeah, man, man and go-go. Man, man, go-go. Shout out to man, man, go-go. Right on for that, man. Yeah. Man, man, was ready to get home. We out of here, man. Yeah, it's a serious guy, man. Ain't playing. Yeah, serious like that, yeah, man. He's like, man, it's skin thirty, man. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. G? Yeah. Yo, so you know, let, let everybody know. You know, uh, you know, uh, give us a for, for those who don't know who you know Teflon is. You know, what I'm saying, give us a quick, yeah. uh, quick overview, and then you know we get, we get started. I right, yeah, for the for for the most part, man. My name's Sean Branch, the media. Now, I didn't give myself that title. The media gave me that title, Teflon Sean, because of you know. <laughs> Some things that happen in, in in the court system that I got away with, but you know, man, it is what it is. So you from from DC? Yeah, from born DC. and raised, or born and raised, born and raised. Okay, tell us about DC, man. You know, we we from New York City. You know, we we know. I've been out there a couple times. Yeah. Uh, you know, I bust the move a few times. Out. Oh, hold on, let me take it easy because people take things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been out there. I got family out there. I I, I DJ out there a couple times. So yeah. I've been out there, but 
you know, you're from a different era, a different time. You know, t- tell us about DC growing up. Growing up in DC, man, it was um, it was treacherous, man. You know what I mean? It was treacherous, man. It was a lot of, a lot of craziness in the streets, man. A lot of gun smoke in the air. You know what I mean? For the most part, you had to be a shock among sharks, man, and mm. swimming in the waters of DC, man, because the waters was bloody back then. So, you know what I mean? You had to be a man. You had to be man enough to hold your own, man. You know, I'm quite sure y'all know about the go-go scene. Go-go was popping it's real facts. heavy up there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then the rap. Eventually caught on, and then guys got into the rap game. But you know, DC was heavily known for you know the percussion bands, the live uh, bands, and, and the go-go scene was real heavy up there. It's still heavy, but not like it was back then. Right. You know what I mean? But DC was rough, man. It was a rough city, man. Ben's door was it was small. You know what I mean? You had four sections of DC: northeast, northwest, southeast, mm-hmm. southwest. But and it was small, you know what I mean. The demographic of it is real tight, but it was it was crazy times back then when I was, you know, doing my thing in the streets. So, about the household, you, you grew both parents in the household, or? No, nah, nah, I grew up um, you know, with, with single parent home, man. My mother, mm. my father, you know, he'd come check in, check out. Mm. But for the most part, man, you know, I just grew up with my mother, my grandmother, and my cousins. You know. Real quick, I saw um, in the interview, right? You said that you made up a no, you didn't make up a story, but you said something about your pops. He had passed away for something else, and he really passed away from cancer. And you kept it real, right? Yeah, I ain't yeah. gonna lie. That, I, yeah, you you gave my I was like, oh man. That. Yeah, I got a lot of scrutiny behind that shit too because people they wanted a memoir from me when I put the book out, right? Mm-hmm. And the book is loosely based off my life. You know what I mean? It's, it's some things in there I. I kind of like embellish a little bit, but for the most part, ninety-seven percent of the book is facts. Mm. So what made you say that about your pops? What were you just thinking about? Like, what made you say that? <laughs> Be honest with you, it's no statute of limitation on murder, man. You know what I mean? And there's some things that came from that situation with my pops, man. That is still open. Gotcha. So, gotcha. you know what I mean? For the most part, man, I gotta I gotta embellish some things and tweak some things just so I won't. Pull the mic a little closer. Bro. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. trying to I'm trying to duck an indictment. <laughs> oh, I understand. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? So growing up, you, you know, so growing up, you you, you know, uh, I see I see here in the notes, man. Uh, you know, you uh, into sports, football, boxing. Yeah, football and boxing, man. You know what I mean? Football and boxing was my thing, man. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, you know, it was the money wasn't like it was a day in either sport for us back then growing up, right? So, you know, we seen, you know, guys like Rafer, Paul Weinstock. Taco, Chaos, these kind of guys, man, that's getting all this money, you know, and we was, we had to be in a gym 24-7, damn near, and wasn't seeing no money, we just getting sweat and, and, and shit out of it, that wasn't attractive to us, so we was more so looking towards the, you know, the hustlers back then, we was young and that's who we wanted to be like, that's who we wanted to emulate, you know what I mean, we wasn't looking at the sports figures back then, or trying to be like them, we wanted to be like the hustlers mm-hmm. back then, you know what I mean? So, so when you let's go back real quick a little bit. When you say that, um, you grew up in a single household, like you know your pops would pop in and out. What did that do to you mentally? Like, did you think about it as a kid, or like as a grown man, you thought about it, like my pops wasn't like did it did it affect you as a child? Your pops not really being there. Nah, no, like, I mean, he was he would he would be there. He wasn't. He wasn't living with me, though. You know what I mean? But he would check in, like I say. My mother was the hustler. You know what I mean? So a lot of things I seen her do growing up, I kind of like, you know what I mean? was like, yeah, that's, that's you know, how, you know, a person supposed to, or a, a parent supposed to take care of the household, get out there and get it by any means. Mm. So I kind of like took a, snatched a page or two out of her book when I seen her getting out there every day, working two jobs, come home, still paving, hitting the pavement, selling Avon, doing her thing door to door so you know what I mean then when I get in trouble she'll drag me with her you mm. know what I mean drag me with her and I ain't want to tag along I wanted to go play with my friends but when I seen how she was hustling I'm like yeah this is how you get out here and get it you know I didn't mean? know Avon was dead back in the days yeah man she was a flat foot hustler for real you know what I mean you know she'd get out there and door to door and go get it you had any siblings nah oh, only child, child. Mm, okay wow wow so mom is hustling. So what make you what what what, what leads you to the streets? 
what led me to the streets. Like I say, man, growing up saying the hustlers ride past my house every day in these big benzes. You know what I mean? Then it was a project up the street from my from where I lived at that uh my mother warned me about, told me stay away from every day, stay the f from off that hill. And uh one day, man, I got with the guys I went to school with, and I migrated up there, and I never came back. Mm. Once I got a taste of that that atmosphere, I loved it. And I seen how easy it was to get money <clears throat> up there. I went up there and I stayed up there. And I kind of like, you know, put my footprints all over that motherfucker. And, and it is what it is. It, that hood became mine. Mm. And what age was that that you started going up there? I started going up there at 11. 11 years old. Wow. Mm. So so at, at that age, you, you, you knew, like, you know what I'm saying? You knew you wanted to get that, that real money. And, you yeah, because once I started to see guys my age... Putting out bank rolls and shit. I'm like, oh, mm. I, how you getting this money, man? Like this is <laughs> it's mind blowing to me. I'm like, how you getting this money? And first thing I'm thinking about is that he stole it. You know what I mean? Like, nah, I'm hustling. I'm like, hustling what? He showed me some bags, some shake bags of coke. Like, this it right here, man. These joints go for fifty dollars. Mm. You gotta give your man thirty five. You keep fifteen, and I'm like, man, show me how to do it. He showed me how to do it, and I caught on like that, and it, that shit just took off. But what you want to, you know, at, at, at 11, 12 years old, like, what do you want to buy at that age that you got to get that much man. money? <laughs> sneakers, that's it. We was hustling for sneakers, for the clothes, <laughs> Fila sweatsuits, mm. Sergio Giacchini sweatsuits, Hugo Ball sweaters, okay, polo shirts, all the Nikes, mm. the Deer Doors, the Asic Tigers, the gold ones. You know what I mean? That's what we was hustling for, the Gucci shit. And we, I spent all my money on clothes, man. I'm be honest. I can have five hundred dollars in my pocket. I'm gonna spend all of it on clothes. Mm. Back when, then, when you was younger, was the murder in DC big? When you was younger, at your age, or it got big like in the '80s and stuff like that? It got big in the '80s. Back okay. when I was younger, like 11, 12, 13 years old, we was fighting. We was fighting, man. Like we gonna knuggle it up, man. Like we we try to see you, man. We gonna we gonna square, but we gonna yeah, we gonna chin check like. A and then, man, you know, eventually later on, probably like 87, 88, going into 88, that's when the, that's when the gun smoke, man, started to get crazy in the air in D.C. Mm, mm. So you young, you know what I mean? And in, in the notes here, it says that, you know, by your teenage years, you started, you had the, the, the cocaine, the pills, and the crack. But what I'm saying, I don't know if you can name anybody, but, like, did anybody put you under their wing? Yeah. Anybody yeah. that's known or is just somebody that's, you know. Yeah, I mean, I had a I had a number of um teachers, man. Okay. You teachers, know, that's good. Yeah. And um that that schooled me to a lot of about the streets, man. And they they was telling me about every element. You know what I mean? You got you got your hustlers, you got your your stick up boys, you got your 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 jack <laughs> boys, you got your your snatchers, you know what I mean? You got your pimps. So it was they would ride me around and show me different people. And like he do that, he do this. Mm -hmm. If you gonna get in this game, and you gotta know who these people are, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. So they point out certain people to me, man. And um, you know, a number of my um my teachers, man, my mentors, man. It, it started off with a guy named Taco. You know what I mean? Taco was um a guy, man, that um showed me a lot. You know what I mean? He took me on his wing, man, and showed me a lot about about how you know to move in them streets and how to conduct yourself as a man and be respected and not be, you know, taken lightly or, or, or looked at as a punk. You know what I mean? He showed me a lot about how the protect was yours. You know what I mean? And never let nobody... I remember one time, man, I'm going to give you a story real quick. Yeah, please. When um, I was at the ice cream truck, I probably had like $600 in my, in my hand, right? So I'm, I'm buying the kids for shit and everything. And uh, this, was, this was actually my first case flip. When um, God tried to snatch some money out of my hand, I had so much of a tight grip on this shit, though, he couldn't get it. He couldn't get it. He's still trying to take my money out of my hand. I remember what Taco said, don't never let nobody take shit from you. I whipped out that butterfly blicky and gutted him. So, mm. yeah, right there, and I was like 17. Let, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Before that 17 year old, and first of all, why, they gave, why was his name Taco? Cause he he looked at he looked at Puerto Rican, he looked at Mexican. You know what I mean? he looked like one of them that eat tacos all day. You yeah, know what I mean? 
don't got nothing for that one. Do that <laughs> Why would we? Nah, put that do it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was just, it was just like, G. Nah, I was trying to find some Spanish to you know to kind of yeah, go with the, yeah, yeah. go with the thing. You know, like you try to play sound effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you would have played that. It would have fell out. Nah, yeah. So, yeah. so, he, so he, he looked, Spanish. Yeah. but he was getting money. Yeah, he was getting money. So before you this you being seventeen year old when that incident happened, tell us what was a memorable. Did, and did you go through anything from 11 to 16 that was crazy? I wanted like a crazy moment where you was like, eh, I'm, in, I'm, I'm out here for real. Yeah. Anything that you witnessed? Can you yeah, share a story yeah, with us, no please? no question. When, when, when I first started hustling, and uh, a guy named, uh, named, named K gave me, um, he the one put the shake in my hand. He the one gave, gave me my first work. And um, while I'm up there trying to hustle, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm waiting for my man to bring me customers to just show me the ropes. And uh, I seen an old time a man, uh, I don't know if he was on coke or whatever, get his head blew off with a shotgun right in front of me. Not even mm. as far as me, you were. You know what I mean? And that shit scared the shit out of me. I got on my bike flip and I paddled as fast <laughs> as my little legs could move all the way down that hill till I got home. Wow. And I was scared. Of shit. And I told him I'm not going back up there no more. I'm not going back up there no more. But when I went to school, that shit done something to me, right? That shit done something to me. I'm like, damn, like. What the fuck? My mother told me to stay my ass from up there. Like, I don't think people really take serious how a kid could be traumatized, right, at such a young age, and it had you, it put you in a state of mind where, though, you like, like back then, going up in D.C., like if you see a murder that young, that shit just make you just want to get crazy. It don't, it don't scare some kids to the point where you just like, oh man, I'm, I ain't never going. That's made me that made me want to do that shit, man because i seen the fear that it that put everybody around him when he seen that with this gun everybody got the fuck away from him so at that young age it kind of like made me want to i wanted to get that gun in my hand mm. and yeah straight up really yeah so why did you do you feel like and, and i'm just with all due respect did you're a short guy. I'm a short guy. Did you have a Napoleon complex at a young age? Do you feel like anybody, like, well, it, does that, is that a real thing? I mean, it could be with some people, right? But for me, it wasn't, it wasn't really that, right? It was, because right. I knew I, I could fight, but I knew that I can't beat everybody, of course, right? And um, I'm short, you know what I mean? So it was all t taller guys, older guys back then that they would try you, you know what I mean? And I'm not going to say, you know, I ended up becoming who I am later. But back then when I was younger, you know what I mean? I knew mother was going to trap me because I started getting money. You know what I mean? I knew I couldn't beat everybody. I'm going to hit your ass with a thousand body shots if I can't reach your face. And I'm going to try to break <laughs> your ass down. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> but for the most part, <laughs> but for the most part, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, I got to get rid of these and get them out my business and get them out my business quick. So it was either knife or the gun for me. And it started off with that knife. By the ice cream mm. truck. Yeah, you know by the ice cream truck. Did you ever mess up any any work? Did you ever get in trouble? Because like, when I was younger, and you know, trying to be a part of things, man. I remember one of my. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't get in detail, but one of my, you know, I remember getting into it with one of the older homies, man. You know, just thinking I know it all, and they had to teach me a lesson. I got yeah. jumped by two of them. Yeah, yeah. They taught me a lesson. Have you ever been through something like that where you had to get checked by, or you you know you was just smooth and you knew it all. <laughs> nah, I um. You seem like you smooth to me, man. I, <laughs> like a lie. I, I I ain't never get checked by none of them, right? Ooh. But uh, I'm gonna tell you an incident though okay. that kind of almost got me fucked around. But my grandma was through some for coke away of mine. Grandma. She she like, why the f you keep stealing my powder? I mean, my what they call that shit, that baking soda. I'm like, mama, that ain't baking soda. She throw this in the trash. Mm. She throw this baking soda in the bag. She said, why you got baking soda in this room? And threw this in the trash. Like, literally just dumped it out. Dumped my shit out. It wasn't number the ounce, but I could have got, I could have got fucked up about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just so happened that my man was like, man, he understood. You know what I mean? He understood. It was like, man, I, you know, that shit happened to me before, so don't worry about it. Mm. You talking about Taco? Yeah. Taco. Oh, oh man, man, Taco. I like that. <laughs> taco. Yeah. Taco Tuesday. Yo, so, so. At this time, how are you and moms at this time? Like, you know, like you, you're a little older now. What's your relationship with your mother? Like, you guys are you guys are good or? Man, my mother, we um, we kind of had, you know, by her giving birth to me at a real young age, you know, man, it was like she didn't know how to be a parent. 
You know what I mean? To be honest with you, she really didn't. And so my grandmother raised me. Okay. You know what I mean? So my mother, me and my mother kind of <clears throat> developed like that brother and sister kind of relationship later on. You know what I mean? But I was out the house, man. I was out, I jumped off the porch at 11. And I was always completely out the house at what, 15, 16 years old. I was gone. Mm. 17, I had my own apartment. So I, I slide through, make sure moms and grandma was good. But, you know, we kind of like, we kind of grew up away from each other, kind of. You know what right. I mean? But that's moms, and I still love her. But we 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 never had that that strong type of, you know, that mother and that mother and son relationship. Mm. How old was she when she had you? She was fifteen. Mm. So that's why grandma stepped in and helped. Right. She was fifteen. Mm. How old was your father? My father was eighteen. Okay. Okay. And um, even though pops is in and out, did, did you? What was your relationship with your father later on? That's what I want to know. Like, man, my man, my father was cool, man. You know, my father was in the streets. You know what I mean? He dipped and dabbed in the streets. You know what I mean? But he liked that liquor. He mean he liked that beer. So man, man, cousin was talking about it on the way up here, right? Like I used to duck him because I hated the smell of that shit. <laughs> I hated the smell of beer. That shit was like seeping out his pores, and I hated that shit. So I used to duck him a lot. But I used to go around, you know, Leesway Park, where he used to be. You know, hustling that, doing his thing in the alley, and check on him. And, you know what I mean? Make sure he good. You know what I mean? And he used to try to ride me around and, and, and school me this. Shit. But I'm already he not knowing. I'm already hip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. my pops. I'm already in the game. You know what I mean? So, so but honestly speaking, he was one of those guys that drank and would stay outside. Like one of those people. Nah, he wouldn't stay outside. He wouldn't be outside all night. But he liked that beer, you know what I mean? While he was out there doing this little thing, it was mm -hmm. it was a drug back then called Delalas. I don't know if y'all hip to them or not, right? Nah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they little pills, they look like yellow allergy tablets, right? What is it called? Delalas. And uh, that's what he used to be selling, you know what I mean? So, yeah, he used to try to, he used to, try to school me, and I was like, man, you don't have a clue, really, who your son really is now. <laughs> mm. I see yeah. it, yeah. Delalas, I see it. So he used to sell that? Yeah. Hmm. So now you outside, you 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 making you moving. Taco got you on and stuff. Grandma threw in the powder in the garbage. Then after grandma threw the powder away, I can I can see I can see the grandma <laughs> yeah. Taco um, Taco looked out. Yeah, he understood. Yeah, what happened next? Like who who like did you did you stay with Taco or did you kept working for him? What nah. made you? So Taco got locked up. Taco got locked up. I want to say eighty seven. 86 and while Taco was locked up <clears throat> I met a New York cat named Lou Lou Hobbs in Demisio mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh you know they um they kind of put a little more than what Taco was giving me in my hands they trusted me with a little more because they didn't have no way to get rid of it and they was in a hood where I kind of like you know was respected a lot in that hood so you only right for these guys coming out of town to get with somebody that got, you know, this respect in the hood. So I was him. And uh they 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 trusted me, man, with a little bit more than what, you know, Taco was able to get. And uh that's how our relationship kinda like it formed that way. When they seen that I wasn't on no I'm gonna get them their money. You know what I mean? Whatever they trust me with, I'm gonna make sure they were straight. Every, whatever situation they run into in the hood of Montana, I'm gonna make sure they good. Ain't nobody gonna f with them. And we we formulated a, a friendship that ended up turning into a brotherhood. You know, I would come to New York with them, Albany Projects, Flatbush. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they show me around the city up here, <clears throat> and it was all love both ways. How did you meet them? Where they 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 landed up Montana, and they was hustling out this lady named Joetta's house. Okay, so. One day I was in Joy the house because you know we just had the beepers back then. So I get mm. I get hit on the hip. I go in there, use the phone, and I seen one of their workers, a guy named D Davon, mm -hmm. with this big ass gold rope on. So I automatically knew he was from New York. I already I automatically <laughs> knew he was from up top because we ain't wear them joints. I'm like, oh man, what the fuck is that? So I'm asking Joy, who the hell is this dude you got in here hustling out this house where only us supposed to be in here anyway? Are they from New York? They cool. They got the biggest goddamn 50 rocks ever seen in my life and showed me a 50 <laughs> rock this damn big flip. So I'm like, hold on, let me see this. Shit. 
and I chopped one down. I bought one and chopped one down. And I got like eight twenties out the month. Hold on, <laughs> mm, I had to get at you, man. The hustler's oh. hustler. Yeah, <laughs> you took New York work and flipped it into your own. No question. <laughs> no question. I, how could Ooh. you not? The rocks was this big. But but how were they able to do? How were they able to just to, to migrate to another area? What would DC be considered? It's not what what you call it? Not a state, no. No nah. city. City. Yeah. Yeah. How can how can you how can New Yorkers just migrate to another city and hustle like that? See, how do they get they, away with that? They got away with it because where these particular ones got away with it because they landed in a spot which was Montana Terrace, right? Where it's an open air drug market. Nobody kind of like locked the area down. You know what I mean? Nobody mm -hmm. to say, man, you can't hustle up here because this is my spot. So when they got with Joetta, Joetta know everybody up the motherfucker. You know what I mean? So she let them hustle out of her house. But they was selling her the, 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 the uh, work of 50s. She would break them down, come outside, sell them, whatever. So once I seen it, and I'm looking for this how this how we end up linking up and getting cool, right? Because when I'm I come listening. outside, I seen Davon and I seen Demencio getting robbed by one of the Jack Boys around our way named Herman Epps. So when I seen them getting robbed, Herman Epps got their pants down to their ankles. So my whole thing, I the joy to tell me that these guys got these working 50s, they from New York. My thing is, I need them. I need them to 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 you know get my money too. So I'm gonna make sure they good. So I'm stopping. So I lied to Herman, like, man, hold on, man, these my peoples, man. These my family from New York. What the fuck is you doing? So Herman kind of knew I was lying. He's like, man, come on, man. For real? Hmm. You don't even know these motherfuckers. I said, I do, <laughs> man. Them my motherfuckers, peoples, leave them alone. So when I stopped him, Herman's like, man, for you. I'm gonna give him a pass on this one for you. So Demencio seeing the respect that I had and took me on his wing, introduced me to Lou. Lou introduced me to Saint, and the rest is history with them. Wait, hold on, hold on. So, so, so I'm, a, I'm, a, um, I want to close my eyes real quick and think about this. So. <laughs> you telling me that you came outside and saw that a guy named Herman, yeah, the official, right, yeah, had two guys from New York. In Montana, that that area that I saw the watching the documentary, yeah, with their pants to their ankles. Yes, facts. How? Facts. He had them burn. He had them. He had two pistols on these dudes, man. Two of them, like this. Strip. Whatever he said to them motherfuckers, they. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go go say yeah. I believe him, man. Yeah. Go, go. Well, seriously? Yeah. Facts, man. No no exaggeration, man. Yeah, and, and and that was a smart move that you did, basically though. Yeah. Like you know, not saying smart like that. I mean, like for business wise, right. facts. You know what I mean? It was. I a seen a bigger mm -hmm. picture with these dudes. Man. Yeah, I knew that because you remember the rock, right? So I, and nobody of Montana had no work that big. You know what I mean? Taco was gone. Mm -hmm. I like what am I going to do now? You know what I mean? So it's like the timing couldn't have been no more perfect for me. How, to how much time dudes. Taco got, got at that time? Taco end up doing, I think like three years. Mm. I want to say two, two maybe three years. And the what? And the, and then like, for drugs, right? If, where's he now? He he on streets now. Oh, Taco's on the streets yeah, he, now. He's home. He's home. Okay, okay. He haven't been locked up since. Okay, so so. Now, but what age was this when you met Demencio? What age were you? I was fifteen. Really? Yeah. Mm. And how old was Demencio? Demencio was probably 19 or 18, 18, 19 by the time. Yeah. Hey, hold on, man. So you had the game in your mind set from, from that age, from young, 15. You already seen the moves you got to make and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. mind you, I've been in the streets since I was 11, so I seen a lot growing up in Montana Tours. Mm. From 11 to 15, right, when Taco showed me the ropes, Chaos show me the ropes, Mo, all these dudes that I met before I met Demencio and Lou, kind of like like my area was crazy, flip. You know what I mean? The, the hood I grew up in was crazy, bro. Like all day, every day, somebody is outside hustling. No exaggeration. All day, every day, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, you got kids six years old riding on tricycles. They got full fledged 
full court basketball game still going on. Ice cream truck still jumping. Mothers outside, their robes. Girls out there joint jumping. Double dust, braiding hair, doing whatever. This never stopped. The atmosphere was crazy. Mm. So I seen a lot just being observant <clears throat> and just, you know, being a student. And just watching. You know what I mean? I didn't like, I never wanted to do this type of shit. These interviews and shit like that, I never wanted to do that. I turned down Don D with twice because I don't, I like the, I don't do too much talking, but I never get tired of listening. Hmm. G chair, G chair, G. That's one of those, one of those lines yeah, nah, for me, man. Let I was, it go. I was, let it go. Let's go. <laughs> it's early. Right. Hey, 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 yo, man, man, man. That's, I, 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 I know somebody probably on the phone. It's making noise, man. I don't know what's going on, man. It's killing me, man. It's, yeah, man, man put that, you don't have the energy. Just turn the volume down, man. Put it in your ear. My man, man, man. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's water. I see, I see yeah. you keep like, man. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm trying, trying to figure out where. I, I don't know if it's the camera. Yeah. I don't know. I said, what's that noise? Then I saw, man, like, this. oh, it's my man. Yeah. So I'm my phone, man. I'm sorry. I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, so, so. You saw me keep looking, right? Yeah. Uh, I love him. He, yeah. he, looked at, he looked at the fake watch. He, he's my man forever. <laughs> so, so. Now you're 15, that happened. He, he bring you to New York. How long you you in New York for now? But I didn't stay long. I stayed okay. long. You know, it was probably like a couple weeks. You know what I mean? That's when I met Demencio Mother, his brothers and everything, and Lou uh, Mother. And that's when Lou introduced me to one Arm Monk, a guy named one Arm Monk, uh, Ken Do, uh, Saint. I mean, I already met Saint back in the city, but um, Fat Sean, a couple other dudes, man. They took me around uh, the rooftop. Mm -hmm. uh, Ivis, was that uh, Ivis, Ivis Square Mall or something like that with the skating ring inside? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you know, he just showed me around, man. It was, it was all love, man. I fell in love with this joint. How different for you was New York than DC when you, when you first came out here? Like, it's crazy you asked that question because I was telling them on the way up. It was, it was too Ooh, fast, man. It was, too fast. Everything was, everybody was moving. I'm like, God, that was time I loved it up here. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it was different from DC. Mm. You know what I mean? Like my hood, everybody, they move around. Pretty fast too, but uh, Pitt, you like is always in your way, man. Somebody always in your way. Like, ah, man, let me, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, everybody moved fast up this joint, but I loved it because mm. it was different. It was a different atmosphere for me. Real quick, at what age did you meet Wayne Perry? I met Wayne when I when I got locked up, man. I met Wayne up to jail when I caught that that body at seventeen. Okay, we gonna get, we gonna get to let's let's slow down because you you know you like it. so so so. Fifteen, see them, you become cool. New York is too fast. Come back to DC, but you found a way. Are were you now? Who? Let's be real. I don't want to read on no snitching stuff, but who you get work from at that time? At what time? At that time, at a young age, who you get work? <laughs> Come on, don't do that. You get the work <laughs> so, from. You tell me when 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 D, when D and Lou was hit in yeah, the city. Yeah, you was getting it from them. Yeah, I was getting it from them. You was getting you was getting it from them. Yeah. At a young age. A young age. I told you, man, once um once I kinda like stopped Herman from going through this with his jack move with 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 D and uh and Devon, it was like he was like, man, I'm gonna give you he gave me an ounce. First thing he gave me was an ounce. He told me bring him five hundred. I couldn't believe this because up then back then we get an ounce for twelve. So when he told me to give him five hundred, now mind you, five hundred dollars for an ounce ain't around my way because I could take an ounce, rock that motherfucker up, get 120s out of it, and make $2,000 easy a day. So mm. you ask for 500, I'm getting, I'm getting three times the problem. I'm like, oh yeah, this 500, I'll give you that all day long. That's sweet. So once he seen that, it went from an ounce to an eighth, to a quarter, to a whole bird. So once he gave me the, the brick, I'm like, oh, shit. I ain't gonna lie, I got scared. <laughs> I got scared because it was more than what I was used to. You know what I'm saying? It was more than what I was used to. And I'm like, but I, I had a cool youngest with me that I gave all them apes and, and we just flooded that. Who was doing the drugs back then though? Because every time you, when you gotta talk about DC, you know, or like, who was on it? Who? Like working people? Like man, the people in the street? Like, you, wow. you would be surprised, man. You had people from lawyers. Politicians, doctors, athletes, police. Really? Yeah, bro. You police had all, too? Man, yeah. Man, you had so many cruddy police up there, man, that was blowing, snorting coke. I don't know about smoking crack. I know they was snorting coke. And was they was just, they was police in the blue, but they getting high. Hey, man, that was crazy, man. That's crazy. When did you learn about the crack situation? Well, 
Tago introduced me to to the crack. You know what I mean? And um, I I still didn't know how to cook it until I met uh, LA guy. He the one showed me how to how to cook the coke. So so he introduced you to crack. Yeah. Taco was like, yo, this is the new best thing. Uh, and then did you, do you remember seeing, because you was dealing coke, do you remember seeing the wave or the impact that crack had? Do you remember seeing that? Yeah, I seen a, I seen a big change in it when it went from powder to coke. At first, it was it was calling it free base, right? Yeah. It was cooking, it was free basing or whatever, right? So then when I started to see people renting their, renting their cars out and you getting crackheads up here that was smoking the coke. They was they wasn't snorting no more. They was smoking it, putting it in the pipe, smoking it. They was getting naked and doing all this wild shit. They rolled around in the mud for the shit. They had like one ride lick a dog dick and all that. Excuse me, forgive me, miss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they was doing some wild stuff for us. So I'm like, this shit is crazy. Yeah, come on, man. Don't do it. Don't, 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 don't make a story up like that to my liquor dogs. Yeah, man, I'll tell you facts, bro. I'll tell you How facts. How they gonna do that, man? man Somebody they, challenge them to do that? Yeah. You ain't gonna just do that. You ain't get no money from the dog, so somebody gotta dare you to do that. <laughs> you ain't get no, you ain't hey, get no listen, money from the dog. Man, you have you had people that was snow that was smoking the coke that would do anything for her back there, flip. Mm. Straight up. They had a look, it was one dude that knew how to climb the lamp post, right? Oh, the light God. post. He knew how to climb them. <laughs> so they paid him, give him some coke to climb, put the cup up there, put the crack in that He goes up there, say, man, look, one climb up there, put the crack in the cup, McDonald's cup. Up like, no, I'm gonna give you 20 rock if you can climb up that and get it. But you gotta get up that butt naked. You think oh. this man ain't scoot his ass up that pole, get that coke out that cup? What? He did? Hell yeah. Shh. Hell f yeah. Ass slid back down that motherfucker. Skit, skit, skit. That's all you hear skin scraping on the pole. Skit, skit, skit. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wild yeah. shit was going on, man. That's wild, bro. Yeah. Skin was burning, huh? Yeah, he was sliding down that <laughs> I told him you should have put some baby oil on your ass. <laughs> Slid down that mother, you been smooth. Let's go. <laughs> so, 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 all right, so now, yeah. all right, so let, let's move forward a little bit. So, you said that when you when you caught the guy in the ice cream truck, when the guy tried to rob you, right, what ended up happening to him? I mean, he 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 can't. He reached his early demise, man. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't mean to. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? But and it was unfortunate because I didn't mean to do that, shit, man. I really didn't want to do that. I just was trying to get this motherfucker the away from me, and I didn't expect for him to, you know, lose his life, and I end up going to jail for. It. Did you ha guys have a prior issue at all? Did nah. you Were you you guys weren't aware of each other at that time? Nah, it was just um. It was one of them things where older dude, man, you know, been in the neighborhood for, for so, however many years, you know, he feel like he's somebody, you know what I mean? I'm young, I'm up and coming, I f I'm think I'm somebody's growing into my own, you know what I mean? And um, he's seeing me like this young nigga got all this money and try to snatch some money from me. And I wasn't, I, I wasn't having it. Was his, was his, was his history, was he booking people? Was he, uh, was he... I don't even know, bro. And at the time, I didn't even give a f You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Be honest with you. It's like, you know, you have young guys today, right? Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, like myself, if, if if I'm in the neighborhood and it's another young guy in the neighborhood, he might be up and coming, and somebody might see me like, oh, yeah, that's Teflon right there. You know what I mean? Some of you should do this or do that. Young guy feel like, you know, he feeling this self. He feel like he's somebody. Be like, man, I don't grow what he used to do. That's what he used to do. I'm doing this shit now. Mm. So that's kind of like the attitude that I took with the older guy. I don't give a f about your past, what you did in the past, who you did it to, none of that shit. Jump out there with me, I'm going to dirt you. But, but let's, mm. let's, and I, I'm going to be respectful. Let's just back up a little bit because, you know, his family never spoke to you about it? Did his family ever get upset? Nah. I, nah, I don't, when I went to court, I don't think I was looking for that. I was looking for his family to be in the courtroom at the time when I was going through my trial, right? And I didn't see nobody. I didn't see none of his family there. I don't even know if he even really had family or if they really even give a fuck about him or what mm. happened to him or not, right? But um, nah, nobody family, his family never uh, never showed up, never reached out to me, never said nothing, never tried to get at me, none of that. How did you end up getting caught? Somebody in the neighborhood told you know what I mean? It's my name came up and uh, they came and got me, man. You know, somebody in the neighborhood, man, said it was me. 
and they they came in. But how much time? How much did he pass instantly, or he passed away in the hospital? I'm not even sure. So that's none of your business. Got it. So ooh, you're gonna get mad at me about these questions again. So that happened. You get locked up. How much time did they give you? Did you go to trial or you copped yeah, out? Yeah, I'm on the trial. I beat it. Beat the case. <laughs> that, that's the start of it, Flip. That's mm. the start of it. That's the start of what later became Teflon. That's the start of it. And it was, it was more to come after that. So how'd you beat, beat the case? Well, I beat the case because I know you a slick talker, man. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was um, I had a at the time I had a public defender. Okay. At that time, you know what I mean, named Sean Moore, hell of a hell of a attorney, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He was like coming into his own now, and I was scared to go to court with a public defender. But when I reached out to a pay lawyer, they wanted more money than my peoples had to put up for me, right? So my grandma was like, "I'm not, I'm not taking out a second mortgage on this house to pay no more." Attorney, no forty, fifty thousand dollars. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. So I went to trial with a, a, a court appointed lawyer. You know what I mean? And um, one of the guys in the neighborhood that um, that was he wasn't with me, but he was there. And he 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 he's the one who told on me, right? And mm-hmm. the witness that they put on the stand was a guy in the neighborhood that was supposed to be a kingpin. So my lawyer got him on the stand and kind of like made this. Say he was a kingpin in this neighborhood, and that this was his turf, and that he would protect this turf at all costs, and that the other guy that told on me was working for him. So the other guy that told, he ended up, he ended up getting gone too. But the guy that they said was a kingpin, he said he was a kingpin. He, my lawyer, flipped him up, man, tripped him up all kind of ways in court, and uh, made him say that in so many words that the other guy that ended up telling that lost his life too, did it for him. So the jury didn't, they they believed that he had hired the other dude to kill his dude and that it wasn't me. And at the time, Flip, mind you, I'm, I'm 17 and I look like I'm 12 now, at the time. Let me ask you a question. Is this Kingpin allegedly, is it a name that we're familiar with? Nah, nah, he, okay. he, he ain't nobody. You know what I mean? He got he to stand and try to make himself to be somebody and, and him trying to do that my lawyer, man, f***ed him around on the stand, so. Okay, so then you beat that case. Uh, you had the butterfly, he tried to rob you, got him up out of there. Yeah. Your story was completely different anyway, but at the time it was yeah. completely different, but you beat that. Then now in your mind, I just beat a situation. Where does that put you mentally? Be honest with you, man, it put me, it put me in a mind state, man, that, you know, I got a reputation now. You know what I mean? And in this neighborhood. So now it's like this is this is what I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? This is what I'm gonna do. And like <laughs> I can't even explain it really. Like how that just like it, it, it turns something on in my head, man. You know what I mean? Just seeing this going on. You know what I mean? It turns it, it, it flicked the switch on in my head. I'm like, once I seen, like I told you, how when the guy got his head blew off with the shotgun, how he moved the crowd. And now people got this stigma on me, like, oh yeah, Sean will do that. Sean is this and Sean is that. So now it's like I gotta I gotta uphold this image. So to speak. I gotta uphold this image and I'm gonna let my know I'm not to be played with of this motherfucker and I'm gonna go around. So what happened next? What happened next was I met a LA cat named Roy. LA Roy. While um while Taco was locked up. That's when I met Roy. And um, Roy took me to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? He took me to a whole nother level, man. And um, put me in a position where as though I can eat more. I can live better and I can eat more. But now, let me go back. Because after that body, when I was 17, a whole lot of other things started happening when I picked up that pistol. So a lot of people... They didn't know that I like I'm hustling too. They didn't know that. They only know about the gunplay side of it, right? So now when I got this work, I was scared to come buy this work from me because they like, man, Sean ain't no hustler. Sean, Sean do that. 
But they don't know I got this work. So now, Taco comes home. So when Taco comes home, I'm in a position to get these birds, right? But I can't sell them. I'm stuck with them. So now I got to put Taco on the front like, huh, I need you to sell these joints. And then you selling them, I'm going to make sure I protect it. So a lot of motherfuckers didn't know that, that I was the one getting the work, giving it to him, but I was also protecting him. You see what I'm saying? So I had to do that because, he, truth be told, and I hate to say this about my man because I love him to death, but he was a, he was a sucker. He wasn't known for no type of violence. He would take it from him, you know what I mean, if they could. They would take it from him, you know what I mean? And But being as though he got me on his team, you know what I mean, now, you know what I mean? It's like, nah, we can't fuck with Taco now because Sean going to come. Um... <sighs> Uh oh, what happened? <laughs> what happened, man? Wow, where, where, where you going, bro? <laughs> Ain't nothing happening. Where, where, where you going? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> why you call your man a sucker like that? Oh, okay. okay. I mean, like I said, I, I hate to do bro. that, man, but I mean, it is Come what it is. Come on, Flip. man. It is what it is. I can't, I can't sugarcoat it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. it been, it been. It's older guys that the neighborhood be like, man. If it wasn't for Sean, I'd take your. But they don't know that and try to take his shit, you try to take my right. You did right. with Matt. So I knew that in order for me to get this work all, I needed him. I needed him to push it because he had the clientele and his clientele was scared of me. So without him, I wouldn't be able to sell it to them. So I'm like, you sell it and I protect it. What made you pick up the pistol? A lot of people don't answer that though. What made you pick up the pistol? Was it because of the situation that happened? Or because, like, did you, what situation made you go that direction? Or you just like, I need it because I need it? Nah, I'm, what made me go in that direction, Flip, was because everybody in the city went in that direction. And like mm -hmm. I say, you had to be a shock amongst shocks mm -hmm. in that water in That's Washington. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if you was in, that, in them streets that deep and you was playing a game that heavy, you had to protect what's yours. And in order to put, you can't, you can't do this no more. You know what I mean? Like, you can't. Like, is coming with that gun and you throw your hands up. They're going to be like, man, you playing. And bust you. Mm. Yeah, so, you know what I mean? You got to meet five with five, bro. You said that the gunplay started to come like late late 80s, right? Yeah. Something like that. It started to come into play a little more. Yeah. But you just, nothing happened. Nobody threatened you. No, nothing happened where you feel like I got the pistol. Nah. It was just... You nah. heard a lot of people was dropping. Well, that and also with the amount of work that Roy was giving me, I had to protect it, bro. You know what I mean? I had to. And in order, and the only way I could protect that is if, you know what I mean, I sparked fire to his ass if he tried me. You know what I mean? So I had to kind of like end up being a muscle for my own product. What, where was Demencio at this time? The mission on them had left. They had left. I don't know what happened, but when L.A. Roy came, matter of fact, I think the might have got killed during that time. I think he got killed in 88. He got killed in 87 or 88, something like that. You sure? Yeah, it was, it was, it was something like that. 87, 88, I think. I think killed in 91? I don't know. No, so, so, so. You might be right. You might be right, because I had got locked up. So when I was locked up at the time, you're right, it was 90. 91, maybe 92, I think. What, I can't what, remember the years. What you got locked up for at that time? 92? Yeah, like the, the, the time. I went in for a murder. Not the ice cream. Bro. Nah, I went in for another murder in 92. I came home. I got locked up in 87. I came home in 88. Yeah, maybe a year, a couple months later, and went back in in 92. And what happened to that situation? Or you can't talk about it? And when I went, in, when I went on that case, I beat it. What, the second one too? Yeah. How much cases you beat? I be nine. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I be nine. That's Put nine it up. Nine. You can Google it. It's on there. Google it. Nine what? Nine murders? Yeah. Wow. Google that shit. Why you got a computer? Open? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I started bringing the paperwork my mother myself, but I wanted you to Google that shit. I was waiting for that question. Nine murders you beat. Pull up Teflon suspect. 
I think I saw. I see I saw, it. Yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw yeah, the yeah. notes too. Yeah, I, 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 I seen the notes too. Mighty big time. <laughs> he playing around. He's innocent and he has never been found guilty of intimidating government witnesses. Wow. So how much did you ever do time? Yeah. Man, they got me. <laughs> they got me. They stuck it to me and they stuck it to me good for some shit I ain't even do. Mm. Right, but before we get into that, so so <laughs> if you don't mind, can you walk us through nah, joints, bro? Hit the joint, man. Let's go. Hit the joint. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Go, go. G G chill, chill, G G. So 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 nine nine you went to Wait, hold on. You beat nine bodies? Yeah. I, I, I'm reading it, but I don't believe it. Did, did somebody uh, edit this site? <laughs> Stop it, man. <laughs> Photoshopped it up. Yo, did anybody that? edit this? Nine for real? Seriously? Yeah, it's for real. Yeah. That's, that's when the title came from. Because they could never stick me with nothing. The, the media, the Washington Post named me Teflon, man. I ain't get that name myself. I see that Washington Post. I see it. I see it. Front page. <clears throat> Front page, the post. Not the metro section, Flip. The mm. front fucking page, bro. <laughs> don't nobody make the front page. Niggas don't make the front page, bro. Mm. Make the metro section. Talk, talk to him, man. He don't hear you. I hit. Yo, don't try to, don't try to hype against me. I hear. I'm with him, man. Hey, Flip. <laughs> hey, Flip. It's only three motherfuckers oh, in American history that they gave that title to, bro. Who? Ronald Reagan, John Gotti, and me. What? Mm. Facts. The Teflon suspect. <laughs> so, all right. So... Oh, he got all the cases right here. Wait, 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 wait. When did you, when did you end up doing the time? I got convicted in '94. '94. Okay, I see the '94 joint. All right, but let's back, let's back up a little bit. Let's back up a little bit. Let's back up a little bit. Um, a quick branch of assault with intent to kill. Take the gun down. <laughs> He's still like nah. No, 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 no. We went, we went. No, we went. That's we crazy went, though. We, we read this, but what I'm saying in the notes, but what I'm saying is that I didn't believe what was going on. To be honest, I didn't believe it. So, all right. So let's let, let's back up a little bit. So the second situation, what happened? Which one? What do you mean the second situation? Because you said nah. We were the first. First was, was was the ice cream truck. Right. Whatever I, you, I, I can't. I can't even remember the order. To be honest with you, I can't. I can't remember what, who was who in what order, bro. Understood. Understood. You know what I mean? All right. So you want me to ask you questions? What? what? Look, we can't go through the whole case history, bro. Because some giant <laughs> things are still. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to really um. Go to you know you know Michael Greens and the. And the John Queen, I don't know if you remember these names. I don't know. I just throw oh, yeah, it out there. Yeah, I know. I know. It's cool. Which? That's all right. It's going to flip crazy. <laughs> oh, no, which one can you talk about? None of them. None of them. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, but you got, you got, you got, a, you got, a, you got to quit it nine times. Now, let me ask you a question. So, when did you, you said you met, um, Wayne Perry in prison. Right. What year was that? That was in... I want to say 89. Right before I came home. 89. How did you meet him? I met him through Pop. Shorty Pop. He just okay. introduced you to him? Yeah, we was we was all... We was cool. So, you know, all of us had bodies on the same unit. You know what I mean? We was on the same unit. And mm -hmm. me and Pop was kicking him one day... And Wayne came back from court, and uh, Pop was telling me about Alpo, and he was telling me Poe was looking for some help, you know what I mean? And he gave me a spiel like, man, but you got to do everything he say do. I'm like, man, you tell Poe, suck my d I'm not doing shit he say do, f him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know him, I don't f him, you know what I mean? So he hollered at Wayne, he was like, yeah, this is my man Wayne, Wayne, let me holler at you, this is Sean. So that's how me and Wayne met. We got cool because we knew the same people. So then both of us got out. So when we got out, we ended up seeing each other, and we 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 got we got you know we was alright. What you mean you was alright? 
we was alright. It was a mutual level of respect there. We was cool. We, like I wouldn't say that was my man's man, but we was we was cool. He didn't like you. Yeah, he he he. I mean, he. I don't know if he did. If he did, if he didn't, but he never expressed that to me. You know what I mean? I don't think he would have. Did you like him? <laughs> that's, that's the question. That was it right there. <laughs> now, I want to know if you, if you did it. Why? It. What, 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 what about him might have rubbed you the wrong way? Honestly, what about him? They rubbed me the wrong way. Man, yeah. Wayne was cool. You know, you know what I mean. Like we wasn't the best of friends, but what you was... like about him? Man, stop, Sean. Just keep it real. Man. <laughs> I mean, it's sometimes me. a guy living his truth. Flip. You know what I mean? Oh, living your truth, like somewhere. for real. Like yeah, it's gonna it's gonna go somewhere because I'm and I don't want to do this because. But Wayne exposed a side of me about his manhood that I don't like. The homosexual stuff? Hey, man, I, you said it, not me. That, wait, hold on. I I was, <laughs> no, no, no. Hold, hold, hold. So, I, there, it was something online where a, uh, a FBI agent was talking about it. Right. Right? The FBI. I saw it online. I think that I... No, I don't really rock with the guy. But it was something online where a guy, my man Lou... He sent me a clip where FBI agent was talking Daniel about Daniel Riley. Oh, yeah, him was talking about. He mentioned me in that same interview. Daniel Riley. I, I, don't, don't hype yourself too much. No, no I'm not. No, I'm just giving you facts. You up there? You up there right now? Let's, let's bring you back down. Come down the stairs, man. You are, right now you on the, you on the thirteenth floor right now. Let's get down. Right. The, come back to the fifth with me, bro. All right, okay. So All right, let's go. That's true. Wayne yeah. Perry indulged in homosexuality. Yeah. How you do you know, know that was true, though? Because I seen it. Flip. Nah, Sean. Nah, man. Yeah, Flip. No! Yeah, Flip. Oh! Yeah. Yo! Yo, hey, Flip, oh, I, I, hey, Flip, I just gave you exclusive right now, bro. Yo, on the speakers today, bro? For real? Yeah, hey, for real. Flip, I put that on I put that on my dead son, bro. And this is this is a part of, this is a side of Wayne that, um, that I, I, I lost total respect for. You know what I mean? Like, because, you know, before before that was side of Wayne was exposing me, Wayne was a man's man. I had all the respect and love in the world for him. You know what I mean? But My man, 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 just came in here kind of surprised. Man, man, you got something to say, man, man? We put everybody... You all right? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. All right, man, man, come on. Don't, 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 don't whisper in the hallway like you did last time, man. Say it. <laughs> I say it from the chest every time. Oh! <laughs> 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 Let's go, man. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of take Ojo's, Ojo's side. So, honestly, can you tell us how you saw it? I went looking for him one day of the jail, man. You know what I mean? I come, I come back from court. No, I came back home with a visit. My bad. I come out with a visit, and I went looking for him. I had a message for him, for from Mike, Michael Jackson. And when I went looking for Slim, I went to his room. And uh, you know, we 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 kinda had that rapport where we walk in each other's rooms without knocking, you know what I mean? Because nobody's expecting nothing to be going on in the room, especially like that. So when I pulled the door and I seen what I seen, Slim it it, it, it me up to a point where it, it's just it fed me up about him. And I, I lost all respect for him because um, you know, I'm a man's man and I, I don't condone that shit. Don't indulge in it, don't respect it at all. So when I seen it, and I said something to his co-defendant, Big Ty. Big Ty was like, man, you ain't know Wayne dip, like dipping that. I'm like, F no, I ain't know. I don't hang with Wayne on the streets. How would I know? So when I asked him about it, I'm like, man, stay on. I'm like, what the You know what he told me? Man, stay out of my business. I'm like, all right, cool. You got that, big boy. You know what I mean? Yeah, that fucked me up and I, I lost all respect for him for that. But that didn't change his his character in the streets, did it? Nah, it didn't. But okay. at the same time, it, it changed it, it changed his character in my eyes. You know what I mean? Now I'm looking at you totally different, and I'm not respecting you the same. You saw it with your own eyes, though. You said your flip. I saw it with my own. I saw two men. I saw Wayne and another man together. Flip. I'm not going. I'm not one thing. I'm not going to do, man, is say what I. I haven't saw, or I'm Understood. not gonna put a bone on nobody. Understood. If I don't, like, I'm not a third party spreader. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna spread and never say, "Oh yeah, such such told me this about Wayne." Mm. Yeah, and I know some people, man. When they see this, they gonna be they gonna be mad. I'm gonna ruffle some feathers, but I don't give a. F you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. 
Like, and whoever don't like it, you got to take it up with that man. I ain't do that. He did it. Did people know in DC that he was indulging in that type man, of activities? Yeah. Fact. I mean, everybody knew. Was he doing it in, when he was in, in the town as well, or it was just in prison? Like I say, I I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because me and, me and Slim didn't hang out every day Understood. like that. We only saw each other in, in passing, right? But, you know what I mean? His code friend told me, like, man, you ain't know? I'm like, nah, I didn't know, bro. Like, how would I know? So, Alpo now. Alpo, um... You heard, you first heard about Alpo in prison, you said. Right. Nah. Right? And nah, then, nah. I didn't I didn't first hear about him in prison. Pop told me about him in prison that he needed some help. But I knew I heard about Poe through Lou and Demisio before Poe even got here. What did they say about him? You know, they was they was telling me not to fuck with him. They like, man, as a guy gonna come to your town now, Alpo, man, he hit if he if you ever run across him, don't fuck with him. He's a snake he ain't to be trusted. You know what I mean? And I mm. and I learned later on that the reason why they said that is because of a situation where Alpo was over here some Spanish guys talking and Spanish about some work and Poe came back and double backed on him and, 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 and robbed him. Poe's been his friends or whatever. I don't know. Did you ever meet him, Alpo? Nah, but we um we never got a chance to get that close. Understood. You know what I mean to each other because um and I'm pretty sure Wayne told him about me because whenever I came around, Poe would get on even on his motorcycle or in his car and burn rubber. He would get the f- away from me whenever I came around. He there was a story about him getting um attacked in D.C. Um, why did they attack him? Were they hating on him? I'm not so sure. I, I know it's a couple incidents I heard about that um. That um Poe got got attacked, got dudes try to get at him. One dude was jawbreaker, try to get at Poe and uh Titus, try to get at him. So them are only two incidents I heard about when somebody really tried to get at Poe. What was their reason? You think? I, I'm I'm not sure. But let me ask you on this question, and I'm and this you know please don't take offense to this. Well, it's not offensive, but Poe was he flashy in D.C. as he was in New York? Was he a flashy guy? I mean, I don't, I don't know how he was in New York, right? But he, um, you know, Poe would come through. He got the big boy whips. He got the the cars that you know, other hustlers in DC they recognize as oh damn, let's drop the bag on that. He got the NXX, the Aqua, the the Mercedes SL convertible. You know what I mean? He got his little man, big head Gary, the same car. So they, you know, they flexing around the city. You know what I mean? So my recognized him and knew that he was getting money. You know what I mean? So. He, he was he was kind of flashy, you know what I mean? He had his jewelry on and go to clubs and, you know, do his thing. But, you know what I mean? That was him. Did it mean anything to anybody? Huh? It, 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 it's obvious, like, when you say that was him. So he was flashy, basically. Yeah, he was, he was you know, he, he was, was a little, little more flashy than the average. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And, like, you know, when, when you... I'm pretty sure you heard his interviews and stuff as far as, like, when he was in prison... When you talk about the big, you knew Big Head Gary and all yeah. these people as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And even though Dementia told you not to mess with him, you said you never came across him. But how did you feel about him after the situation? Like, did you guys hear about the situation that happened with Dementia? Did you know it came from that direction back in the days, or you learned about it later on? Nah, I I'm glad you 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 brought that up, right? Because um, when Dementia got killed, I was locked up, and um. I had heard bits and pieces of what happened. I didn't know that the hit came from Poe, if it came from Poe. You know what I mean? I just heard that Wayne. I just kept hearing Wayne's name. So in that interview that you spoke about with the, with the FBI detective, Dan O'Reilly, when he spoke about when I went to go see Wayne when he was up in Marlboro, when I went up there, I went up there and asked him about that situation with Demencio. And... um. He, he he threw some names out there, you know what I mean? What the what the detective said in the interview that me and Wayne discussed on a visit, that was that was false. That ain't that conversation never happened. You know what I mean? But we talked about D. And he threw some names out there about D, what happened to D. And um, you know what I mean, I did my own investigating. You know what I mean, to see what I could find. And um, yeah. 
But the name that Alpo said was it the name that you found out when you was in, when you came home? The name that because Alpo talked about it, right? He talked about it in the interview that dementia was too big for his bridges or something like that. He thought he was bigger than what he was, right? When he when he, when he was asked about it, and I don't know if he said who did it, but did you find out who did it? Because I remember they were trying to blame one of Dementio's mans at the time because he was with Dementio or something like that. Something they, they thought that somebody did Lou. it. Or... They say they say Lou had something to do with it and Lou left him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I'm going to say this, right? I f*** with Lou from the heart. Like, Lou like a brother to me. I still communicate with Lou right now to the day. And I don't want to believe that about Lou because it's going to make me look at Lou totally different. It's going to make me feel different about him because I love D like a brother. You know what I mean? And if you knew that this was going to happen, or if you left him for dead the way they say you left him dead, I'm going to feel some kind of way about that, man. So I don't want to believe that shit, right? So when I, and I still don't, I haven't had this conversation with Lou yet. But what's the story, though, that you heard? That Lou, that, that the part that Lou might have played? I, hold on, this is allegedly. First and foremost, I don't, I'm not saying anything as far as, like, I'm just saying we saw the documentary. Right. Um, They did cut some names out. But when we talked about it with Dementio, I, I remember um, him saying that somebody was being blamed. Lou, they tried to blame Lou because Alpo, I guess, called Dementio's mom and sent flowers. And then people were saying because Lou left him. But what's the story that you heard at that time? The story I heard was that, um, you know, they, I got I got bits and pieces of it, man. Like, they sprinkled the truth or whatever. With lies. With lies, you know what I mean? So what I got was, man, that... um. Wayne did it. You know what I mean? I found I heard later that Wayne did it because Poe wanted him out of the way because Demencio was getting too big for his britches in the cities, you know, as he put it. But um so when I went to like I said, when I went to go see Wayne, Wayne denied it. You know what I mean? He told me, man, it was somewhere else. You know what I mean? And the little dude that he told me that um actually did it, did it for Poe. It wasn't him, like it wasn't me. You know what I mean? It wasn't me, it was this other person. He did it because of Poe wanted, wanted him out of the way. So, um, like I say, man, I end up doing my own investigation and I end up, you know what I mean, going in for that little dude's um uh murder. So I they questioned me about that later. So that dude died. Yeah. The dude that shot Demencio, yeah. He got killed. Right. And you got questioned for it. Right. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's what he. That's, that's what he said. <laughs> that's what he said, man. I don't know. G, you know. G, G, G. How, G. how she gonna spit his ass? What the, <laughs> what the man said. Why did, you, why did you pull that up? Why did you just pull in, up, just, in case. Sound <laughs> just in case. Just in case. You gotta G. be ready, man. Uh, Let's yeah. go, go, go. So, so, so. But Wayne denied it to you. Just yeah. want to make sure. So now, all right. But what I asked you earlier that you didn't get the answer for me is that. What did you hear that the role that what were people because Lil Dimensio didn't really elaborate. What were people accuse Lou of doing? Like what did they say that he do the role that he might have played in it? The accusations. Well, like I said, only thing I heard that Lou Lou did, man, was um like I said, I, I don't know if Lou knew that it was going down or not, right? And they said, man, Lou left him. Like, Lou didn't come to his aid. Lou didn't see if he was still breathing, if he needed help, try to get him help. He seen the plate, supposedly seen the plate. He, I don't know if he knew beforehand that the plate was going down. Seen the plate and left him. Just straight got out of there. Ain't go over there and see if he needed help, if he was still breathing, none of that shit. You know and do you mean? think that, you know, they said that the Dementio, rest in peace of Dementio, they said that the situation happened because something with a lady with Alpo or something like that, something about a lady, I'm not sure. Yeah, that and was... that's that's what they try to spin it and say that it was about um, Poe's wife. Demencio disrespected his wife, called her a your man, he's a too, tell him I said it, whatever. You know what I mean? And, but I, I don't believe that, man. I know Poe, tender dick that he is. I know how he is about these women. So And I know how he fall in love easy. You know what I mean? And he want to... He wanted to get at my about these women, especially these women in Washington. You know what I mean? 
How you gonna just call that man a tender dick? Because you, you I, listen, man, Pope fell, in, Pope fell in love with this bro in the city named Fuzzy. Fuzzy was giving the box to everybody, bro. So I know that if you fall in love with Fuzzy, you got to be. And I don't no disrespect to Fuzzy, you know what I mean? I she cool, you know what I mean, all that, but yeah, she she was she was promiscuous, man. She was spreading herself real thin back then, bro. And if for Poe to fall in love with this woman, and then fall in love, he tanks baby mother, Keita. Falls in love with her, buy Keita's mother a house so they say just so they can have the basement. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, this dude, man, he don't he 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 he's something wrong with him, man. Like the dude fall in love too easy up here. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> so his encounter with women displays that he may get infatuated with them at a rapid pace. Yes? In yes. your opinion. Yes, in my and opinion, you, and, yes. you, and you know these to be facts. I know these to be facts. But how do you know he fell, how can, how you know he fell in love with Miss Fuzzy? He fell in love with Fuzzy because he actually he wanted to beef with Spoggy is about her. He wanted to beef with my little man is about her. So is like telling people like letting her know like man she's a freak. What the fuck is you fall in love with this or she's a freak? You know what I mean? And Poe wasn't trying to hear like man tell your little you tell guy tell your little man leave my girl alone. So I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. You got you got dudes that they easily man to fall in love with women, man. Like, and I'm talking about the the freakiest of the freak. So in in turn, that makes him a tender dick, in your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out what makes. Because then now I'm trying. I'm trying to reevaluate certain things that yeah. that I may have been involved in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying oh. to see what makes it a guy a tender. Attended. So, so hmm. he fell in love with these women, and he wanted to beef over them. Yeah, and man, and that was crazy, man, because you know everybody in the city know, man, what was up with Fuzzy, man. You know what I mean? And for him to be like the way he was about her, you know what I mean? People was looking at him like kind of strange, like somebody need to hip pull, man. Somebody really need to pull this coattail about this bra because she ain't the one for you to be trying to beef with other dudes about. Falling in love with, and none of that, shit, man. You know what I mean? So yeah, in my opinion, flip, he's tender dick. <laughs> <laughs> that word just sounds crazy. Do, do you? Last question about him. How do you feel about him overall? I don't have no feelings about Pope. Be honest with you, man. Cause um, I don't know him personally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I really don't give a fuck about him personally. You know what I mean? You know, when him and Wayne was running around the streets of D.C. doing their thing, you know, I told Wayne to be careful. I told Wayne, you know, not to trust a dude from first-hand information that I got from my peoples up top, right? And um, Wayne chose to ignore those warnings, right? He didn't want to adhere to the signs that somebody that he's supposed to have been f***ing with and respected, giving them. Like, if you my man, you tell me, look, Sean, Man, watch yourself around him. He ain't to be f with. My antenna's going up, and I'm gonna always be alert. But Wayne wasn't in a good enough situation to back out of that situation right there and say, "Nah, I'm not f with the dude no more." Because Poe was, he was bird feeding him. He was giving him just enough to keep him satisfied, just enough to keep him around, and just enough to keep him protected. So Wayne wasn't trying to leave that. Wasn't nobody f with Wayne. When Wayne was locked up, Wayne couldn't even get bail money, bro. And he was locked up on a low-level drug charge, they say, out, man. He couldn't even get bail money. It wasn't until he got with Poe. Same situation like when uh, Suge Knight got with Pop and got him out. Same thing. So when Suge Knight got Pop out of jail and Pop produced all these hits for Suge, that's the same situation, kind of like with Wayne. When, Wayne, when Poe got Wayne out, he was like, oh, yeah, this my man now. He was the only one that came to save me, so I'm going to do whatever for him and I'm going to protect him at all costs. Alpo made a smart move then. He did. He did. He made a chess play on him. You know what I mean? He made a chess play on him. You know what I mean? But Wayne wasn't smart enough then. You know, you got some pawns, right, on this board, on this chess board of life, right, that can maneuver across this board and maneuver through life and end up becoming kings, bro. Wayne wasn't that type of thinker to know how to maneuver in certain situations to grow to be a king. 
That's why he stayed upon. That's why Poe was able to use him the way he used him and end up using him as his ticket to get out of jail because Wayne couldn't think. He couldn't think good enough to become a king on that board. Did Wayne ever have fly stuff, like cars and stuff like that? Like He only had what Poe gave him. He only had what Poe bought for him. The Versace shit that Wayne wore, he got it because of... Man, Wayne ain't wasn't Wayne wasn't doing had no Versace, none of that shit before he went to jail. Wayne wasn't driving Benz's Infinities, BMWs, none of that shit before he went to jail. It wasn't until Poe came in his life and changed everything for him. Now, mind you, I don't knock it, you know what I mean? Like, get what you can get, but at the same time, be smart enough to be able to know and, and peep certain signs and symbols on this ball, in this chessboard of life to be able to, man, um, you know, protect yourself. And Wayne couldn't do it. Alpo did a he chess a, move. Yeah, he did a chess move. He did a chess move. And I, 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 give, him, I give him props for that. He, you know what I mean? He knew exactly what to do with Wayne. You know what I mean? Until the time was right when he could dispose of him. He ain't need him no more. He ain't give a f about Wayne. He ain't love Wayne. But Wayne, in some way in his mind, thought that he did just because he was giving him shit. He got oh. infatuated with the materialistic shit that Poe was giving him and the money that was giving him. And he thought that that was his man. And he loved him for it. And Wayne was a killer. And Wayne was a killer. You give him that. You say he he, he he didn't play. Did he have a short fuse? Was he a short fuse person? Yeah, Wayne Wayne was a sociopath, bro. You know what I mean? Like real talk. Wayne was he was fucked up. You know what I mean? But Wayne was smart enough to know that I'm I'm this type of and I'm I got a short fuse and I'm gonna kill something, but. He was smart enough to know who to fuck with and who not to fuck with. You know what I mean? He did have that type of common sense with him. He knew, ah, I can't play with these type of dudes over here. So I'm a I'm a proud on the weak that's getting his money and I'm a I'm a I'm a flex my muscle on it and I'm gonna put my foot on the net. You knew Rayful Edmund? Yeah, that was my that was my man. That was like my brother, man. How did you meet him? I met him through Taco. Taco introduced him to me. Taco as well. Yeah. And what was your how did your relationship what's your relationship blossom into? Man, Ray We was we was cool, you know what I mean? Ray used to when I used to see him, you know, I'd go around M Street kick it with him. Ray used to tell me a lot about the game and how to, you know, be smart in the game and maneuver a certain way with a with a certain level of charisma. Okay. You know what I mean? And and, and fortitude in these streets. Wayne, I mean, uh Rafa was smooth, man. Like outside of the fact of what he did, the, the foul shit he did when he went bad and got all these dudes locked up, right? Wayne, I mean, I don't keep saying Wayne. Rafa had a certain way about himself that no matter what he did, the community loved him. The community loved him and they got behind him. You know what I mean? They supported him, they they would never tell on him about nothing. You know what I mean? And it was because he took care of them. He took care of everybody around him. And I loved that about him. And it was certain way, certain things about his character and his charisma that I wanted to implement in mine as well. You know? They said in 2019, uh, he, uh, he came... Um, Hold on. In 2019, he returned to D.C. for a hearing about his, should his life sentence be reduced? Because I guess he, you know, he told on some people. What what, what was his story? He, he, you know the, the people that he told on? A few of them. It was some guys that, um, that, um, he met while he was incarcerated. And, um, when he got that plug with, um, I can't remember the guy's name, man. Uh, 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 what's what's the lady's name? Yeah, I can't remember her name, but she he met her son, and that was that was the plug right from Columbia. But um, some guys that he met in Lewisburg that he did business with, and some other guys outside in the, in the community that he he was you know reaching out to. That I I don't know who they were, but um, some of the guys, man, that uh. 
he told on man, it was um, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. You know what I mean? I couldn't believe it. And people try to say it was because, you know, he wanted to get his mother out of jail, but I knew different. And I knew it was because that these guys didn't pay Ray. So when he was hitting these dudes with four or five, have many bricks, they wasn't they wasn't playing fair with him. They wasn't paying him. So, you know, what I mean, he took the sucker route to get back at them dudes and um told on them. People respect them in the street. You may got some people that do still. You know what I mean? And did they respect him before back then when he was home? Did he? Was... I think they um they respected who was around him. You know what I mean? That was protecting them. I don't think that Ray had the level of respect to be able to move in these streets without these dudes. Okay. <laughs> wow. So back to you. I'm sorry. So now, moving is shaking. That happened. Pick up pistols. You handle business. Now, can't really talk about what happened, but you end up being you end up being nine bodies. Right. The body you got you got caught for a body. Yeah. What did they accuse you of doing? It was Mike Green that case, and um, I had a co-defendant on that case. We went to a neighborhood and um, to talk to another guy about something, and this guy Mike Green jumps out the car. And uh, he see one of the guys that was with me and confronted them, unknown to me and the other guy that was with me that Mike and my man went to school together. They had a report. So we didn't know how, how you know, how deep the level of play went with these dudes. You know what I mean? We didn't even know they knew each other. So when Mike got out of the car and said something to my man, was like, what the fuck you doing around here, fat sucker ass, whatever, whatever. My code finna hears this. Whipped out on him, blew the boy brains out. So when this happened, you know what I mean? People in the neighborhood that it happened in don't know him. They know me. So now when my name being mentioned in this murder, the homicide detectives want me so motherfucking bad that they charged me with him. So now I'm on a case with this dude. I didn't do it. You know what I mean? Everybody in this neighborhood know I didn't do it. They found the supposed to be eyewitness that wasn't even there, Flip. You know what I mean? This dude lied like shit. Come to court, testified against me. Everything that my co-defendant did, he said I did it. Now, mind you, the jury don't know what's the truth or what's a lie. Okay. They only know what the witnesses say, right? Okay. And the defense, with the, whatever the defense attorney put up, with the argument he put up. So they chose to, you know, I guess believe that witness as credible, right? Even though that this witness was questioned before, said he didn't want to talk. He kept a case in Carl Pepper, Virginia, get some time in Carl Pepper, Virginia, reached out to the homicide detectives with this story about Sean Branch was the one that did it. They bring him to court, testify. The jury, the judge sent the jury into um, recess over the weekend, Friday. Mm -hmm. Told him, you know what I mean, deliberate. Don't don't talk about this case outside this courtroom to nobody. Your husband, your wife, your brother, your sister, your mother, father, nobody, right? Sunday is when they ran that article on the front page of the post. Monday morning, I goes back to court. You know, the judge sequestering all the jury. I'm going to say seven of them say they read it. They still could be fair is what they say. Yeah, we still could be fair. You know what I mean? We read it. One lady say... I, um, I didn't know nothing about it until I came back from New York. Mm. So my lawyer asked, like, well, how did you not know nothing about it until you came back from New York? Say, my sister told me about it. How did your sister know what case she was on? Because the judge uh, uh, told you not to discuss this case with nobody outside this courtroom. So you violated the judge's order. Now, so much that happened within that time that it was grounds for a mistrial. But when the judge said, I mean, when the jury said that they... Still could be fed. The judge said, well, we hit a day for a verdict. We're going to let the case go on. Whatever the outcome, y'all take up the Court of Appeals. Now, at the time, I'm thinking, like, damn, the only outcome that I'm able to take up with the Court of Appeals is a guilty verdict. So I'm like, this 
already know that I'm I'm found guilty because he probably got the note already. You know what I mean? And they wanted me flip. So he let the he let the the jury read the verdict, and they found me guilty. Found my co-defendant not guilty. How much time they gave you? Twenty five to life. How much time did you do? Twenty five every day. I did twenty five. Twenty five. Came home. I've been home three years. Be three years. November the twenty second. Them two came and got me from the jail. So where your co-defendant at? He locked up. He back in on two other homicides. He back in now. Let me ask you a question. Why do? You, how do you think you were able to beat the nine out of ten murders? Be honest with you. I had, <laughs> I had good people around me, man. That was still in society, man. That um, you know, they made sure, man, that. Check my man out. <laughs> they made sure, man, that um, you know, I had good attorneys. You know what I mean? I had um, I had one hell of an attorney, man, that was able to, yeah, you know what I mean. So, like I say, I had um, back when I caught the first bite, I didn't have the money to you know buy this defense. But then when I went in '92, I was able to have you know a few dollars. You know what I mean to 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 buy the best. Defense attorney man that DC had to offer at the time, which was Bernard Grimm, and uh, he fought like hell for me, man. Every case. Did you have people like Man Man and Go Go around and stuff like that? They was young. They was young. They was young. They was young. They, you know what I mean? They they was around, but they was young. They was young. I mean, you know, they come, you know, fly jury rings on their fingers. So, <laughs> are, are, are we supposed to, you know, get some sort of hint? Yeah, we saw the older, older guys, man, do it. So, yeah. You know, I, Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi. Right. Slow, 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 man, man. Slow down. Slow yeah. down. So, 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 you had good lawyers, man. You had good people around that were able to sort of put pressure on others outside so they can't tell on you. No nah. witness tampering. No, nah, yes? no, nah, nah, I'm not gonna say witness. that. I had good people around me outside. They was able to make sure my lawyer got what they needed. Respect. You know what I mean? Did it have anything to do with witness tampering? No. Okay. No, sir. <laughs> what is witness tampering? Witness tampering is you trying to get in the witness ear to persuade them to do something other than what they, I guess, was planning to do. Okay. Okay. Do, and, do, and do the witnesses tell? Yeah, they tell. Yeah, you know they tell. I don't know. Hey, whoa! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They tell. Don't involve me in that. I don't know. I have to do with that, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um. Wow. So, you had a good lawyer, but you did 25. I did 25. Tell us. I want to know your jail experience. I, um, you know, I started in Lawton. You know what I mean? That was um DC's. I guess you would call it state prison, penitentiary. You know, Lawton ended up closing, and they sent a lot of us to um, Youngstown, Ohio, a CCA jail, right? Mm-hmm. DC guys was too much for this this facility, uh, Flip. You know what I mean? Like, body started dropping. They wasn't expecting this. Shit. You got all these different... See, what they did, when they, they were so, under so much pressure by Virginia, right, mm-hmm. to close Lawton, that they... They neglected to do the screening process of who can be around who. They just wanted to get these out of the jail, so they sent an influx of inmates to um, CCA, Youngstown, Ohio. And when they got there, all these guys from di- these different areas in D.C. is beefing with each other. So now you got these beefs going on, and dudes is dying. They getting killed. So they Youngstown fell under pressure to get us out of there. They sent us to the feds. So when I left Youngstown, I went to um, Lewisburg. Penitentiary. And from Lewisburg, you want me to go down the list? So from Lewisburg, you know, I um I ended up catching a stabbing in Lewisburg, went in the hole, got transferred to USP Marion. Went to USP Marion, got into it with the white boys, the ABs. You know what I mean? A B stands for. Aryan Brotherhood. Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah. Got into it with them and um they sent me to um USP um ADX, Florence, Colorado. I know about ADX. Right. So when I got to Florence, Colorado, 
stayed there, stayed in ADX for three years. I couldn't go nowhere because of the situation with the ABs, right? They everywhere. So, you know what I mean? They, they, they got a vicious war going on with the Area Brotherhood and the DC Blacks. This is the, the label that the federal system gave DC guys out of DC, DC Blacks. And uh, I couldn't go. It wasn't a whole lot of places I'd go, so they kicked me out of ADX and put me on the compound at USP Florence, Colorado, right across the street. Stayed up there for a few years and um, was eligible for a transfer. Transferred from Florence, Colorado to um, Pollock, Louisiana. Stayed there, stayed out of trouble long enough to get transferred closer to home. My whole goal was to get a little closer so I could see my daughter, right? And uh, ended up leaving Pollock, Louisiana, went to Hazleton, USP Hazleton, West Virginia. Stayed there, wrote my book in USP Hazleton. That's where um, I penned this uh, masterpiece, man, uh, Money, Murder, Mayhem. And um, left uh, USP Hazleton, was fortunate enough, man, to stay out of trouble long enough to make it to an FCI flip. Made it to an FCI, you know what I mean? Got my, got my degree in business. Uh, got me a certificate in concrete polishing, electrical wiring, you know, a number of certificates, man, you know what I mean, trades and all kind of shit. I just took that time because I knew I was getting short. I was uh, about to see the parole board probably like five years, right? And I needed to have something to, if I made parole, that I would have some type of education I could come out here and find some type of employment and take care of myself. I didn't want to go back to the streets at all. So, you know, I educated myself, got all these certificates and everything, right? And uh, made, seen a parole board at uh, FCI Gilmer and made parole on my first term. On my mm. very first term. Uh, yeah, geez, yeah, yeah. Yo, so so, at what point when you were in there did your, did your mindset change? And, like, what made your mindset change to try to get closer to home and try to get the, you know, uh, the business degree and what's, the, everything you named just now? My mindset... Really changed, man. To be honest with you, man, when my son passed, my son passed away, man, and um, I had a conversation with my daughter, mm. and the way she broke down, man, you know, it like it turned some off on me inside of me, right? It turned that aggression that I had in the system, it turned it off. Mm. You know what I mean? Now I got to focus more so on. Making sure, man, I got everything that the parole commissioner needed to not deny me. Because right. I needed to make it, make it back home to her. Right. You know what I mean? So I made sure, man, I stayed my ass out of trouble. You know what I mean? And what was crazy was, was because, man, by me doing that, like, I really didn't want to have no parts of negativity in that system. If you was talking neg negative shit, miss me with it. I was not trying to be around it at all. I removed that energy out of my life, period. Mm. So and I noticed a change in me once I started like remove that negativity out of my life, right? I noticed a change in me, and uh, I'm moving different. My mindset is different. You know what I mean? I, I I'm compassionate about that I normally don't be compassionate about. Right. I see dudes getting stomped out, stabbed to death on the yard. I'm like, ah, goddamn, I'm cringing now. You know what I mean? Any other time I'd be like, yeah, that's what the fuck you get. Mm. Now I'm like, ah, I gotta get the fuck out of this. Shit. You know what I mean? I gotta get home. I don't I don't want to die in this. Man, I don't want to die here. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in here. I got to go home. Right. So, you know, once my son passed away, man, that's when I was like, man, you know what? It's time for a change, man. You know what I mean? My daughter need me out here. You know what I mean? She getting older. I got to get back out here with her. Now, how how hard is it to make that change now? You you in, you in prison. There's a lot going on. You, you, you know, you you Teflon Sean. Like, you know, you, you in there wild and doing what you do. Right. Take care of yourself. Like, how hard is it to turn that switch off and keep it off now? It wasn't, it, to be honest with you, it wasn't that hard because... I kind of like, I kind of like made my bones, so to speak. You know what I mean, with 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 the homies, mm -hmm. with my cop, and um, I was always one of the ones that whenever something went on with the homies, <clears throat> Sean coming. Right. You know what I mean. I'm coming, and I ain't. You know what I mean. We coming, and we we coming to do some damage. You know what I mean. Like we not we not ducking nothing. Right, right. So I kind of like laid that foundation so much, so and I put my footprint so deep in that on that compound that now and I younger homies there, they looking up to me, they respecting me now. So I ain't never want to look at myself in no big homie, none of that shit because I was still young. Mm -hmm. But because I did so much in the system, 
I'm the big homie now. Now I can kick my feet up a little bit. I can put my knife down. And I can chill. Gotcha. The younger homie is going to take everything now for me because they want they want to earn that respect for me now because it's so all the shit that they heard that I did throughout the system. Right, right. You know what I mean? So it wasn't that hard. And take us to the day real quick when, you know, when you got the, the, the phone call or, or, you know, the, the, the news of your son passing. Like, what, what was that like? I knew something was wrong. You know what I mean? When um they called me to the chapel's office. I didn't, I didn't think it was my son, though. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's like, it's... One of my my mother, you know, one of my older relatives. I didn't think it was my my son. So um, when I go in there, the the chaplain asked me, say, man, you know somebody named Diamond Branch? My heart dropped because when he said her name, that's my daughter. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah. What about someone? She called about your son. Your son in the in 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 the coma. You know what I mean? So when I called, she would tell me, you know, he, he had these seizures. Mm. And when he had these seizures, he fell and hit his head. Mm. And um, while he had in the hospital, he had a seizure. He had a stroke right after that, and uh, went in the coma, man, and never came out of it. Mm. How old? How old was he? Sean was um, Sean was uh, I, I want to say twenty five, twenty five, maybe twenty six at the mm -hmm. time. Wow. Uh, my condolences. Yeah, thank sure, you. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Wow. Hmm. So you tried to um mm, that's kinda caught me off guard real quick. So your goal was to come back home because you need your how how old is your daughter? How old is she now? Yeah. Diamond is um Diamond is twenty nine, twenty eight. Diamond twenty eight. And when, what does that do to you, though? Real, real quick, cause, you know, G Money said, bring us to that day. What mind frame did it put you in when your son passed away? Did you feel like, did you t did you blame yourself at all for that? At, at first I did, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, you know, I should have been there for him more. You know what I mean? I should have. I should have been there, you know what I mean? I I, I kind of like kicked myself in the ass a few times about it, you know what I mean? And I'm I'm glad that he didn't lose his life to the streets because I'd have came home with a different mentality, right? Mm. You know what I mean? So even though I, you know, he started having these seizures later on in life when he was in high school, and um, even though I lost him to, you know, that that brain illness or whatever, right? I still kind of like blame myself a little bit because I wasn't there for him the way I, I thought I was supposed to be for him. You know what I mean? I was wild in the streets. I was doing my thing in the streets and I was neglecting, you know, my duties as a father back then because I'm I'm getting this fast money. You know what I mean? I'm living this life. And I'm thinking at the time being young that being a father was buying gifts, toys, taking them shopping and like that and he good. Not knowing that he needed that nourishment, you know what I mean? He needed that that love, that education, you know what I mean, to know that his father loved him and that his father was there for him and I didn't I neglected to give him that that nourishment that he needed. So I kinda felt like it was my fault, you know what I mean, a little bit because he got a, he started smoking I don't know if y'all heard of this shit called K two. Yeah. He started smoking that shit and drinking. So, you know, with him having these seizures mm. and that shit was getting in his brain and him up more so I, I felt like it, you know if I was home man I could have been there and 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 he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have started smoking that shit. you know wow. Wow. real quick you rest in peace to your son you know what I mean and uh my condolences again real quick you know in the notes that we have here it says um shout out to uh, Michelle two times um you said Agent O'Reilly, you said it earlier, he fabricated the story. What part did he fabricate? The whole conversation. What did he say? Can you bring us back to what he said? Yeah. He yeah. said that <laughs> I went to see Wayne in, in, in Upper Marlboro. And um me and Wayne had a conversation about about Frey, Michael Frey, and who killed Michael Frey. And that if I told Michael Frey's nephew that some guy named Doja did it, 
that we can get Frey's nephew to kill Doja and get Doja out of the way for Wayne. That shit lies, bro. But how, but how would he hear that? He made this shit up. He made this shit up, man. And I believe that he made it. I can't get in the detective here to say why he did it, but my, mm. my weird thing, I think he made that shit up to connect me and Wayne on some type of murder, conspiracy to some type of murder, and get me in on a case with Wayne where I can get life in jail without parole like Wayne did. Because they couldn't, they couldn't never, they couldn't never, you know, get me with nothing before. So I feel as though I felt like, man, he only made that shit up to try to man link me and Wayne together on some type of murder. Do you think that but he didn't talk to Wayne. He didn't have nobody on the floor. So I'm just saying, so he just made that whole, he was freestyling. Yeah, he, but he, yeah, he, but he, he had the other part right about Wayne. What other part? The part where he said Wayne was messing with. <laughs> Why you let? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what yeah, yeah, for, man? yeah, he had it, he had it right. Yeah, he had it right. Now, it's, it's funny that you, you, you brought that shit up again. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that like, he had that part right though. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, everybody in the city know what was up with Wayne and Wayne's sexuality. But Alpo didn't know, you don't think? I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't know. If he, if he knew or not, I, I don't. Respect. Um, What is the future for you? The future, man, you know, the future's... I mean, you're out here three years, man. You're shining. I don't know, you know. <laughs> I, I really don't know what's going on, but you're shining. <laughs> you look the future, me. You're all shining. Man, you got money, two rings on, the Rolexes. I don't know what's going money, on. Money, murder, mayhem, man, is, 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 is taking off, man. You know what I mean? The book has, um, you know, we reached some numbers, man, that exceeded our expectation. We didn't think that we was going to sell that many books. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think the book was going to blow up the way it did. You know what I mean? I want to thank everybody that supported the book thus far. But, um, you know, right now, you know, the future's looking bright for me, man. I'm, um, I got two jobs. I'm working inside um, a youth juvenile facility as a program manager. Really? Down really? there, yeah. I'm working I'm at New Beginnings. What's up, man? Yeah. You know what I mean? What's and up? I'm also working in the community with another initiative called Murder Free DC where we trying to... You know, trying to you know stop some of this violence out here in the streets to Washington D.C. You know what I mean? And um, you know, we getting up to put a documentary out there about Lawton. You know what I mean? Me, Kareem Mowat, Eon Williams, Kirk Frazier. I don't know if y'all know who Kirk Frazier is, but um, he the one that um he the, he the one creator of a uh, American Gangster for BET. Oh, okay. So yeah, we we getting up to do that project as well. And uh, my own project as well. We trying to put this. Either a documentary or a movie out about the book. So, man, you know, the future's looking bright, man. Hopefully, man, you know, that light don't dim no time soon. <laughs> you got part you know? two, to, you got part two of the book coming soon, too, right? Part two coming soon. We try, I'm trying to drop part two before the new year. Okay. Before the new year, man. So, dope, dope. Let me working. ask you a question. Did they try to charge you with the murder of the guy that killed uh, Demencio? No. They, um, they, they only questioned me about it. They only questioned me about it. They didn't try to charge me. They 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 brought me down a homicide and questioned me about it, man. Cause um whoever got in the ear was like, man, you know, Sean, watch out for him because he's gonna try to man uh, retaliate that situation because I guess um they knew, you know, how tight man D was. And, you know, I we, we gave him his name. We gave him his nickname because he was in our hood. So Mon Domencio Montana come from us. That's how he got his nickname. So they knew it was all love up there with us, and they knew that anything that went on with Montana, if I fuck with you, and you fuck with him, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to man uh I'm trying to creep through your window in your attic. I'm trying to come in your attic, and I'm trying to clean your attic out. That sound kind of crazy, but, <laughs> but I understand. that threw me off. That, that, yeah, I, I, I'm you trying to clean you your attic out. I think that oh, no disrespect, like I think that like. They're going to make like a, 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 a the mystery channels on you, man. You're talking some real, real psycho stuff. You, you gave me a whole attic. scenario. Clean the attic yeah. out. You going to go upstairs, go in their house, go into yeah. the attic yeah, and I'm clean the attic to, out. I'm trying to clean your attic out. Yeah, and I know what that means. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm try, I might try to exterminate the whole house, but. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean if you do that, man, I mean, it, it leaves, you know, yeah. chance to live. Yeah. 
But the attic, straight to the yeah, the attic, yeah, I think yeah, that clear. <laughs> straight to the attic. Yeah, straight to the attic. Yeah, I understand those type of talks. You thought I was, I was slow? Nah, nah, never. <laughs> nah, nah, not at all. So Wow. <laughs> clean the attic out. <laughs> you know, a lot of people want to catch that. They ain't gonna catch it. Come on, G. I'm gonna explain to them what it means though, because I don't think they know what clean the attic <laughs> means. I'm gonna tell them. <clears throat> He cool, man. <laughs> he cool. He got to get a G. I agree with you on this one, G. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mr. Clean, you know what I'm saying? Um, yo, so uh, if you can go back, you know, you know, we heard the whole, we heard the, we heard the whole story and the life story and, you know, everything, and you changed now, you know, man, you're doing positive stuff, but right. if you can go back, like, what would you change if, if you could change anything? Man. Uh, be honest it's, it's, with you, man. The only thing I think I'll change, man, be honest with you, man. Is I would be a better father. Okay. Mm. You know what I mean. That's I, I, I that think question. that's the only that's the only thing I would I think I would change, man. Because I respect um, that. Yeah. I was I had a love for the streets, man. That took me away from my kids, man. And um, mm. you know, like when I went to jail, my daughter was one. So I've been gone all her life, man. Miss, miss a lot of, Even yeah. though you know her mother, man, I I, I want to thank her for. She made sure that I stayed in contact. We we kept that relationship together. You know what I mean, and we 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 develop a, a a relationship, me and my daughter. That was it's like it's like no other, man. You know what I mean? That's my twin. You know what I mean? But I think, man, if 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 I could change one thing, man, I think, man, that um, I wouldn't have been in the streets so much, and I would have been more of a father, I, and my presence would have been, you know, with my kids a little more. Yeah, I'd have made a a, a, a deeper presence with them. <laughs> Do me a favor, cause we about to sign on a little bit. Tell us a story that, you, that nobody know. I mean, you said the thing about Wayne Perry gave me exclusive. I'm going to check, you know, because I watched, <laughs> I watched the other interview before, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But tell us something that you that nobody know that you ain't talk about. That you can, that won't get you in trouble, but that you can talk about, you get, you know. I see Man Man Go Go over there smiling. You know, those are my boys, man. I like, I like those guys. Like, he checked his watch again or not? Yeah, like, yo, just, wait, hold on real quick. Man Man is a bug out. He came in here like, yo, he talking about that. He went back. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching. Yeah, man, what, what happened? Tell me. Yeah, I'm watching. Yeah, turn the camera. I said, turn that to my chest. You took it home. No, I said it with my chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. And yeah, I mean, this this might sound crazy, right? People, oh. people might look at me. I don't know how people might look at me because of this shit, but um, i give you one, man. It was when um, L.A. Roy went to jail, right? And um, when he went to jail, it was funny because he lived right up the street from my aunt uncle. I was suiting him out, right? And he never knew that my aunt uncle lived right there. I never told him. And um, when he went to jail, man, um, <laughs> I went up in his house, man. I went up in that motherfucker. Man, and uh, I come out of there with a heavy bag, man. <laughs> oh. You know, what I mean, I never, I like, I don't, t- I don't, people don't know this, right? But I came out of there with a heavy bag, bro, a heavy one, a heavy bag, man. Yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of cash in that mother. <laughs> I mean, what I was supposed to do? Flip? I was supposed to leave it there? Cause if the police came, the police, if they found out that he lived that spot, it was going in, in, the, in the, uh, in the evidence room. So, I mean, who, why wouldn't you want me to have it? <laughs> what the f- I'm your man. I'm supposed to be your man, so why wouldn't you want me to have it? So, I mean, it was in good hands with me, but I did and, some good things with that money, Flip. And, and again, he cleans the attic out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I did some good things with that money. I think Roy would have been proud of me of the things that I did with that money, man. Because the police would have got it, and this just would have sat there. I took care of a lot of people with this money, Flip. Real talk, man. Uh, That's is Roy alive still? Yeah, Roy locked up still. He is. And let me tell you this. Now that I think about it, I'm kind of glad I did the flip because Roy ended up being hot. He ended up being hot, Flip. He mm. told on some people, man. So, yeah, he didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve that shit no more. He really wow. didn't, man. A rat don't deserve shit, man, for real. How you feel about rats? I, I, they don't deserve, they deserve everything they get, man. Everything they get, they deserve it because, man, like, if you get in this way of life and you get in this game, you know what the rules consist of. Mm. 
Mm. And that's the number one rule that you got to abide by when you get in this game. You don't rat on nobody, man. Oh, murder. You do not tell on others against cr about crimes that they committed. To say yourself, if you in it, you got to stay in it, man. And you got to accept the consequences that come with it, whether it be death or prison. And a lot of guys not standing up to that. Shit. They not, they getting this tattoos inked on them, oh, murder, death before dishonor, but they not living that shit, flip for real. A lot of dudes not living that. Mm. You know what I mean? And I seen a lot of dudes, man, like, they got these tattoos on them, old murder, but as soon as they face with a 25-year bit, now you want to tell them other motherfuckers, man, that just to say yourself. And I don't respect it at all. So, yeah, I really feel like a rat, you know, they bottom feeders, they supposed to get whatever the fuck they got coming, man. Mm. Last question from me. Do you think that you were lucky? What you mean? Because I, you know, I, what you saying? Like jail saved me? Yeah, I feel like no, no, no. You saying like jail saved me? Flip? No, 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 no. no, 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 no you no, ask me? Nah, jail ain't save you. Nah, jail ain't save you. <laughs> oh, you ask I'm me? I'm talking about even with the murders, being the, not being the, convicted and stuff like that. Yeah. Nah, joints. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in luck. Mm. You know what I mean? I believe that whatever happens in your life is the law's will. Don't That's nothing right. happen unless it's already decreed, right? So if it's meant for you, it won't miss exactly. you. Exactly, exactly, and that's 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 what I live. But about. why did a lot of witnesses uh, refuse to testify? I'm just curious about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, like, because you know, Yo, you don't let none of this. You don't let. <laughs> no, 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 no. Shout out to Michelle. Shout out to Michelle. Michelle got wonderful notes here, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, of course I knew I see the nine, and I'm just looking like. I see something about witnesses, man. Witnesses keep coming up, so uh, you know some witnesses were lying. Uh, let me let me just let me just You'll go see, over it. So you, uh, just refresh your memory. <laughs> Sean claims the street puts pressure on the potential witnesses that had statements, but later refused to testify. Because I'm gonna tell you why, right? Mm. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. One person was held in contempt of court for not testifying and received life. Now he didn't get life. He got um, he got five years. Five years. He got five man. years for that. Tell us why. In my opinion, I, I believe that it's because these guys come from these neighborhoods, right, that don't condone snitching, right? They don't respect snitching, right? In this neighborhood, they live by this motto, snitches get ditches. They get put in a ditch, right? And um, if this the only area in Washington, D.C. that you can go to, right, you can't go nowhere else. And they know you snitch, you are not gonna survive. So these guys think about it, like off impulse. They're like, yeah, that Sean did it. Then they get a sip, like, oh, what the fuck I'm doing? I gotta go back to Montana. I can't go back up there and, and be a snitch because they are not gonna let me live. So a lot of these guys, man, they kind of recant these stories hmm. because they don't have nowhere else to go but back to that neighborhood where they don't accept snitching at. So. In my opinion, I believe that's why they changed these stories, man. Sean, do you consider yourself a savage? <laughs> I like that cologne. I like that savage cologne, but nah. Oh, Sean, I, I don't know if you're trying to. Like, try <laughs> to what you <laughs> do, do, I'm joking. I'm joking. Do you consider yourself? What I mean? Oh, did you consider yourself a savage? Do you consider because, you know, I guess Montana had a lot of love for you, yes. Right. Montana wouldn't let anything happen. To you. That area wouldn't let anything happen, really. No, nah, I yeah. don't believe so. Did you run that area at one point? I'm say I wouldn't say I ran that area. I would say that um I made a strong enough presence in that area to be respected enough to not be told not to be told. Mm. You know I respected you when you said that you lied about that stuff in your book. Yeah, I respected you. You had me. Yeah. When you said, "Yo, man, you know uh, my father died of cancer," I was like, "Yo, this man is," you know. Well, I don't know why you wrote it in the first place like that, but I I respected you. No, nah, because it. um. I'm gonna tell you why. Why I changed that story up because, um, you know that story. It it happened, but it didn't happen to me. It happened to my father's girlfriend, son. I guess you would call him my stepbrother, right? Mm -hmm. But um, they was never married. But I still call him like a stepbrother. Understood. His father ended up losing his life that way. So I took that part of the story and added it to the book just to make it. You know what I mean? Look, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, don't get me wrong, you telling, you know, a story about your father dying about cancer. Mm -hmm. But I think it was more entertaining. It made a better read. 
that particular part of the book. That's the only part of the book that, um, other than the conversations that the police had in the precinct. Of course, I don't know what the police talked about in the precinct. I don't know about these conversations. I only can assume these conversations that happened in the precinct with the detectives about me, right? This is what they might have been saying at this time. So that part of the book and the first part about, you know, my father, the way my father died was um, embellished a little bit. You know what I mean? I, I had to keep it real with my readers about it because um, I don't want nobody to think that, you know what I mean, this is okay. Okay, you know what I mean? So you said you received a lot of backlash. Backlash from whom? I mean, you know, people wanted, like I said, they wanted the life story. They wanted my memoir. And people don't understand. I, I, I put the book, I put the disclaimer in the book and let them know that the book is fiction. Oh. It's loosely based. It's loosely based on my life. Not everything in the book is facts. You know what I mean? A memoir is coming later. You know what I mean? The book is um I made it entertaining enough, man, to um, you know, cause I wanted I wanted the readers to to be entertained with it. You know what I mean? I didn't want to put, you know, a hundred percent of my life in the book because um my mother didn't want me to. You know what I mean? For once she's like, don't expose everything. You know what I mean? Give them something to talk about, give them something to to like. But don't give them your life story, your whole life story. Shout out to Mama Love. Yeah. Sign out. Give us your Instagram. First of all, round of applause. I think. It's- <laughs> yeah. So wait, real quick, last thing because I, I, I just keep coming to you. So you never. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm loving this, man. I just feel like you know the whole thing about what you saw, homie, do is just it's tripping me out, man. You never talked about that before, did you? Ooh. Wayne? Nah. I don't I talk about it amongst, you know, my family, you know what I mean? My 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 closest circle, man. Now um, you know, this is the first time in the interview that uh I uh I exposed that. I told I I I brought that out. What made you want to do flip the script, man? I know you kinda heard that flip probably, you know, we probably up here. I mean I think I did pretty good. It wasn't too crazy. What what made you want to do this interview? Man, listen, I respect I respect the hustle, bro. You know what I mean? And I'm for my peoples, man. And you know, if we can help each other, you know what I mean, I'm all for it, man. So it's like I got a following that's growing. You got a following that's growing. You know what I mean? Where I'm trying to go at with my life, I think this is 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 one hell of a platform, man, that um, you know, my men and women out here in the streets, you know, that's really in the streets can man uh, appreciate this uh this interview, man, because they've been asking for it. You know what I mean? They've really been asking for it, and I think we had to get the people what they wanted, man. Nobody warned you about coming up here? Like, oh, uh, okay, yeah, you don't look nervous. <laughs> you don't look nervous. Nah. Comfortable. Not at all. Give us your Instagram. Give us the book. Sign out, man. man. Instagram is Sean underscore Teflon Don underscore Branch. That's a long-ass Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the book, man, Money, Murder, Mayhem, man. We uh we we, we coming up on, man, uh half a million copies sold, man. So Jeez. It's been, it been, it been jumping, man, so. Yeah. 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 I just, yeah. I just received a royalty check yesterday, man, from a lightning source, man. That motherfucker was, yeah, it looked like something. Did it, did, did Vlad help your numbers grow? Yeah, Vlad, Vlad, been on Vlad, definitely did, man. It definitely did, you know what I mean? And shout out to Vlad. I know a lot of people, man, they feeling some kind of weird about Vlad right now, but, um, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I mean, the man do what he do, man. I'm, I mean, it's up to the to the person that's been, you know, interviewed and how he, you know, what he exposed and, and what he go for. I, I agree. I think that I they agree. wanted him to apologize for, for misquoting Minister Farrakhan. I mean, I think he should apologize for that. I think, I really do. I, you know what I mean? If you don't misquote the man, you know what I mean? Say what you heard he say, you know what I mean? And, and stay facts. Don't make up <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think he definitely owed the minister, man, uh... Uh, that much respect, man. You know, to um, at least apologize for that. Okay. And thank you. All right, uh, man. man. Dope interview, man. You know, shout to shout to Sean Ranch. You know man, what I'm saying? Uh, you, oh, we hope you like this. We hope you like the interview, man. Man, no question, man. No, no question, question. <laughs> man. Whenever you, whenever, man. You know, I'm invited, man. I'll be back, man. Trust me, Facts, ain't nothing you but are, you know. You, you like that? Y'all like it, man, man, go go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, need that I, money, I, I already heard about huh? you though. You <laughs> I'm free in the morning. You turn on your live, man, man. Going, go, 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 going, going crazy, going hey, crazy. Hey, what's up with that? That uh, was it you? Y'all, that, y'all was freestyling. Y'all was battling, rapping outside. It was y'all nah, too. It wasn't, it wasn't me. Nah, it was me. Probably, it I'm was you or somebody else. Me, but that's. Me.
That's yeah. funny as hell. Yeah, I oh, yeah. that. Man, that shit be crying laughing. Thank man. you, bro. That means a lot, man. Man, you wild, man. I appreciate you. You my man, man. I see with you, man. Huh? Love you in DC. A word? Yeah. Yeah. A word? Yeah. Like, like my homies, they be like, man, you got to get on flip the script, yeah. man. Shout out to DC, man. Yeah, you know? man. They cool. They man. cool, man. Shout out DC, cool. They fucking with you. Yeah, yeah. No, they like, man, you got to go on flip the script. Oh, all right. Yeah, they fucking with you, man. Yeah, straight Thank up. Thank you, bro. Thank Shout you. Shout out to DC once. You know, I, I got a film out there too. Shout out my man Shaka one time. My cousin Shaka in DC. Shout out to Shaka, yeah. yeah. He, he's always tuned in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Shaka, what up? But we here, man. Uh, we're we going to wrap it up, man. Uh, make sure you follow the pages at Queens Flip with a Z, at DJ G Money 156, at Flip the Script Pod, uh-huh. uh, at Picky Eater Show. Uh, hold on, we got we got something we're gonna do special for one one of our one of our staff, you know what I'm saying? One of yeah, yeah, one, yeah. one of our good friends of the show, you know, uh, you know, uh, a birthday just passed. Yeah, mm-hmm. she probably thought we forgot about it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna we're we gonna bring out a little a little birthday cake for for Michelle one time. Round of applause one time for Michelle one time in the building. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Wow. That's Look up. at that! <laughs> Happy birthday, Happy Michelle! Birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, huh? You got paid. <laughs> I don't know if you can get laid, but it's your birthday. <laughs> uh, you got paid. I don't know. If you get look at this is nice. Look at this, man. Yo, this official is cake, man. Shout yeah, to wow. shout to delicioso delicioso delights with a cake. You know what I'm saying, Jennifer? Appreciate you for uh you know making this cake happen. The custom customized Michelle one time birthday cake. You know what I'm saying? Shout to delicioso De- delights in the building. How you feeling, Michelle? What up, man? She, she, she speaks about, to, you about to start crying? What's going on? You all right over there? I'm about to start crying? What's up, man? Happy birthday. Oh happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Take the whole hey. cake, shove it in the face. Hey. Happy birthday. Look at this, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Shout out to Delicioso. You know, hold on. Delicioso. Delicioso. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, girl. You got to go. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you know, just we, we appreciate good people, man. Michelle, one time, has been on board for like, I think, under a year now, maybe like six, six like six months or so. Yeah, she's doing like that. a great job. She 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 she's here. She's very professional. You know, it's and good. I have a, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna draw a me because I'm gonna let you exit this. But I have a lot of issues with a lot of people. Yes, but I don't have issues with her. You try, you try to, you try to find some, well, but you yeah, know, because she get on my nerve. But at the same time, like she, but she gets it, she gets her job done. Nah, all the time. She, she one one thing about what I like about her is that she get it done, and I can appreciate someone who compliments what we do up here. 100%. She hopped on the train moving at 80, and she was able to <laughs> hold on to the rail while I was blowing her little hair in the air. Choo-choo. And she was able to grab grab onto the metal, pause. Yeah. That's, that's, What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> HR said that's a little... Oh! oh okay, all right, all right. It's she was nice. able to grab onto sticks. Oh, oh, oh man. All right, sorry, I let it go. But yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Oh. Nah, but but you know, she came on board. She's doing her thing, man. She she's here all the time. But, you know, she supports the you know what we got going on, and, she and, and she's doing her thing. She also does it behind the scenes. So we film on that for the behind the scenes. So and she's a part of the picky eater uh, show that we do as well for YouTube. So you know. Appreciate you, Michelle, one time, man. And, and, and once again, shout out to Delicioso Delights for the cake, man. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Round That's round of applause one time for that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I said like, one time, this this is this cake is fire, I man. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie, they you know they wanted to catch you in the beginning, you know. I, I said, uh, you know, but happy birthday. I feel like I actually feel like slapping it, but I <laughs> I nah, this is this is this is <laughs> you lucky, you really lucky. I tell you, bro. Oh man, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yo, move it, move it, move it, move it. I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit it. Can we get Michelle on camera one time though? Can you get you on yeah. the on the flip the script yeah. camera for your birthday? Like, can you yeah. come yeah. say what's up to the people one time, man? Yeah. You know what I mean? What's uh, up? What's up? <laughs> First and foremost, let's shout out Sean because I I, I was worried. I told Bast, I said talk to Sean, make sure he's alright with this man. <laughs> and he said, Yo, Sean is cool, so we appreciate you helping us celebrate Michelle's birthday. I think yeah, you know, that's appreciate what's up, you. man. I'm all for that, man. You're a nice guy, man. I mean, you know, I was a little nervous. You know what I mean? Not scared, but nervous. Like I don't trust this guy, man. But you're nice. I didn't like how y'all left last. What do you think I left like that for? Yeah. <laughs> they just rushing, they running out. <laughs> they think yeah. we try to line them up. Ah, it's because of know. him. It's because of Goku. It's because of Mimi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're the queen flip, man. Yeah. You know, shout out to Basco. Yeah. Shout out to uh, e Shout out to the whole team, man. Lock your doors. Close your windows. Close your blinds. Open your blinds. If you see a nigga like Sean on your lawn, don't be afraid to use a firearm. Why? Because he'll get away with hurting you. I'm from Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Bass. Yo, Bass. Yo, Bass. Bash. Crazy.